Good afternoon, everyone. The Committee on the Budget and Government Operations is called back to order. Um, I hope everyone had a tasty lunch today. Um, and with us this afternoon from the Department of Planning and Development is Commissioner Maurice Cox. Welcome, Commissioner Cox. Thank uh, you. Please identify yourself for the record. Uh, identify the staff with you today and proceed with your opening statement. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, um, Madam Chairman. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, first and foremost um, my companion here at the dais, Nina Edamudia, who is an assistant commissioner to the commissioner's office. Um, with us in the box is Melvin Wesley, the first deputy commissioner, um, Chip Hastings, the managing deputy commissioner for economic development. Uh, we have Kathy Dickett, the deputy commissioner for citywide systems. Um, Michael Gaynor, uh, deputy commissioner, general counsel and operations. Um, we share him with DOH. Um, Patrick Murphy, our zoning administrator, zoning. Uh, Matt, Matthew Schmidt, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Finance, who we also share with DOH. Um, Gerardo Garcia, a Deputy Commissioner of Planning and Design. Jim Harbin, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Planning and Design. Uh, and then Cindy Rubick, uh, Assistant Commissioner of the Central Region. Um, so again, uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, good afternoon. Um, Chairwoman Dow, members of City Council, thank you for the opportunity to provide an overview of the Department of Planning and Development's budget request for 2022, along with uh, a brief recap of some of our recent accomplishments and near-term goals for the future. Uh, as you know, DPD administers the city's zoning economic development, planning, design, and historic preservation initiatives, as well as numerous interagency efforts uh, that support our schools, parks, natural resources, and uh, other public assets. The department's $162.3 million budget request for 2022 will further our collective goals uh, for equitable and resilient neighborhood improvements that directly address the needs of residents and businesses. The department's commitment to place-based planning and development starts with uh, professional staff that serve the public. So far this year, we've hired nine new employees and promoted staff from within to fill 12 critical vacancies bringing our total staff to 149 professionals, including leadership within the Operations Bureau and Finance Bureau that we share with the Department of Housing. I'm proud that one-third of the new hires are African-American, uh, one-third are Hispanic, and one-third are white. Our neighborhood focus improvements are led by uh, the nearly two-year-old Invest Southwest Initiative which aspires to revitalize 10 community areas uh, on the south and west sides of Chicago with more than $750 million in targeted public and private investments. Invest Southwest's most significant development tool to date has been through a request for proposals process that has generated more than 40 developer responses for mixed-use investments at key south and west side opportunity sites. Winning RFP selections have been made for seven locations with the total project costs valued at more than $200 million. Four pending selections could easily exceed another $150 million in total project costs. At least three more RFPs could be issued by the end of the year adding hundreds of permanent and temporary jobs to the neighborhoods that need them the most. Uh, to help the smaller emerging and community-based design and development professionals participate in our local revitalization efforts, 
in partnership with the Department of Housing, we reconfigured the city's TIF purchase rehab program this year by targeting the middle, the missing middle development opportunity, making existing commercial mixed use buildings eligible for financial support for up to 50% of acquisition and re, uh, rehabilitation costs. As a result, uh, the vacant storefronts of smaller corner buildings along our commercial corridors will have additional financial resources for permanent improvements. The owners and tenants of these buildings will continue to be supported by the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, which has allocated more than $15 million in grant funding uh, to approximately 60 small business um, projects in 2021. Approximately 90% of the finalists are entrepreneurs of color, and we expect at least two funding rounds totaling $10 million to be uh, announced next year through our 2022 budget request. The program that enables these grants, the Neighborhood Opportunity Bonus System, continues to move forward within the downtown zoning district uh, where approximately two dozen planned development projects approved by the Plan Commission through September are committing more than $65 million in zoning bonus uh, fees to the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. One of the largest planned developments to move forward, uh, con to move towards construction this year is the Brownsville Lakefront project on the former Michael Reese Hospital site. The 48-acre site is being sold by the city for $96.9 million and, and, and being redeveloped as a $3.6 billion mixed-use neighborhood that includes a new street grid and other amenities that will create 20,000 temporary and permanent jobs over the next 10 to 20 years. Another prominent parcel of city-owned land that we announced for redevelopment this year through the C40 competition involves the property at Plymouth and Van Buren uh, in the loop, which will be redeveloped as Chicago's first net zero all affordable high rise, providing 207 rental units priced um, for tenants between 30 to 80 percent of the Chicago area median income. We also expect to announce a redevelopment plan for the city-owned Roosevelt Costner site in North Lawndale later this year, in addition to our ongoing efforts to reduce our inventory of small vacant residential lots through our various land sales programs. The city support for these and other redevelopment projects uh, involve multiple layers of land use planning, community engagement, design, and financial considerations, including uh, the tax increment financing, TIF. Um, I'll quickly mention that 12% of TIF program revenues this year have been allocated toward economic development. The remaining 88% of TIF allocations are being directed toward fully, um, toward fully public uses involving schools and parks uh, as well as uh, affordable housing. Affordable housing, of course, remains an important part of DOH's and DPD's planning goals, which we addressed in part through this year's ordinance for the additional dwelling units. The ordinance allows new housing units in attics, basements, and accessory buildings for the first time in over uh, 50 years, more than 300 ADU zoning applications have been received to date. For the sake of brevity, I'll quickly reference a handful of community or corridor-oriented planning studies that are moving forward or were completed this year, including the Central City Recovery Roadmap for downtown, the Northwestern Avenue Corridor Study for the far north side, the revitalization of vacant lots for more people-centered uses uh, like the award-winning Pop Courts Plaza in Austin. Other citywide efforts include uh, 
a comprehensive repurposing of the city's abandoned and underutilized industrial um, railroad right-of-ways to greenways uh, and efforts to enhance public properties through uh, the Chicago Works Community Challenge. DPD is also helping to implement uh, the city's Equitable Transit Oriented Development, ETOD pilot program to support um, community-driven projects that promote healthy, affordable, and accessible development near transit. Adopted by the Plan Commission this summer, the plan includes a $135,000 pilot, pro pilot program to support um, up to 10 community-driven ETOD proposals. So before I close, I'd like to provide a brief update on the We Will Chicago citywide planning process. More than 150 citizens were selected to join seven research teams this year, and since late July, artists, organizers, and mobile teams have held more than 80 virtual and in-person events across the city to discuss the plan's seven pillars. Uh, and as you likely know from our automatic briefings, DPD is creating a toolkit uh, called Meeting in a Box uh, to help you and your constituents host your own conversations around the plan's pillars. Uh, it's our intention to continue to engage you uh, as this plan is further developed into 22 and, and 2023. In closing, uh, I want to reiterate our commitment to working with you and your constituents to identify and implement community improvement projects that enhance one Chicago, uh, one city for all of us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. We'll start our uh, conversation with you this afternoon with um, the chairman of our Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards Committee, uh, Tom Tunney. Chairman and um, Commissioner, it's uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you and your staff. Um, they've been obviously very responsive to my committee's needs, and um, uh, follow through has been and been good. Thank you. Um, one of the uh, struggles we had in in general is uh, if you could know, or maybe Patrick knows, what is the average time uh, for a zoning review on um, building permits. Are you saying uh, from intake to get to the plan commission? Yeah, well, obviously the first stop is zoning. So, right. what, can we can we get some data on that, or some, or is that certainly the chair at maybe at some point if it's not readily available? So, uh, Patrick, if you can, sure. Uh, Patrick Murphy with the Bureau of Zoning, Alderman. There's there are a few different metrics we have. If it's a if it's a project that does not need plan commission review, then the first zoning review is coming in, a, in roughly two to three business weeks. And then the time to permit post that review is dependent on the comments that are, are received and the responsiveness of applicants. If it's a project that goes through plan commission, we are still on the same pace that we have been for a number of years where we are averaging with a median date of just over 90 days in getting from introduction to a plan commission hearing. Mm -hmm. Again, every time that I've had been intervened, I, you know, we find out where the ball is, whether it's in the developer's court or whether it's in, uh, in yours or various departments, because obviously there's a lot of uh, uh, comments from various different departments in this, but I was specifically talking about the zoning part of it. Okay. Okay. And, and just on a side note, uh, as a member of the plan commission, um, there are, I mean, these are very long days, very long days. So that's probably a credit to the amount of interest in development. But um, uh, I don't know, there was, a, there was talk about um, at one point uh, c combining the plan commission with the community development. I'm like, it, no. it's busy enough, you know? And, um, but it's, it just seems, you know, when we think to some degree, uh, well, let's talk about that. Um, in in the uh, in the queue in the queue of plan commission, do we anticipate a robust three or four, six more months of as 
as a number of projects. I know you talked about, right. you highlighted a few of them. I know we spent a lot of time in the Bronzeville um, uh, PD, but where, right. where are we going from an economy point of view? There was some talk about, well, with the ARO uh, upping to 20%, you know, that we would see some kind of a slowdown. Do you, mm -hmm. Are you feeling that or not? I heard from the building department that our permits actually were down year to, year to date. Well, it's, it's, my, it's my understanding that there was um, a significant pent-up uh, demand. People were waiting to see um, post-COVID. Uh, and uh, I think the dockets that we saw, which were a, a record number, were um, evidence that people had confidence uh, in moving their projects forward. And uh, many of them were held the, the prior year. Um, I think we can anticipate uh, a fair um, a fair number, I would say not nearly uh, as aggressive as the nine hour meeting we were in uh, last month, but I think uh, you know we'll be back to a very comfortable pace. Yes. Patrick the uh, historically, uh, permitting had lagged, obviously, through the, through the pandemic. Starting in late April to early May, we had started to see an uptick in the permit counts, and for the early part of the summer, exceeded the quantities that we were doing from a zoning review from two years ago. Uh, as, our, as of our last update, uh, late last week, we were on par with the number of new permits that have come in for zoning review as we were two years ago. So putting aside uh, the summer of 2020, we're at essentially the same pace we were two years ago. Plan Commission, we're seeing the, the continued uh, um, build out of cases. The uh, late, late summer agendas were an anomaly just because of the changeover in the ARO, and we saw that uh, going into the last ARO change where there was a cutoff date that applicants were targeting as far as their plan commission hearing. But generally speaking, we don't see a, a, a slacking of permits or plan commission. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you for your work. Um, Commissioner, last year we, we, you kind of organized a different way of community planning with districts and, and such. I think we added a number of budget positions, um, and we're adding again, so tell us you know, how it's going, number one, what's the need for more, um, and kind of a one-year review. I know you talked about different plans at different parts of the city, um, but as, as an alderman first and chairman of zoning, um, how do you m integrate and make sure the alderman is basically leading the planning process for his or her ward? Um, thank you for the question. You know, we organized um, the city in um, seven regions so that we could have designated teams so that you would have a single point of contact in a, in a group um, that could provide you with very regular briefings. Uh, that seems to be providing a higher level of touch points. I think we hosted over 230 of these briefings uh, according to uh, Alderman's um, desires. Um, we aren't, um, we don't have each of the regions um, adequately uh, staffed. Uh, and so there are two positions in this year's budget for uh, the Northwest region, so we can build out the team um, in the Northwest. Uh, and uh, we, you know, continually uh, have to reinforce those who are being poached from our teams uh, and uh, bringing them uh, back. But um, I think that, um, I, I think it's working, uh, but again, uh, I need to understand from the, Alderman, the alderman's point of view uh, how you feel it's working for you. Um, I'll let them speak for themselves. Okay. Okay. I, I don't have any problems with your department and or your staff. Otherwise, we'd really have some long hearings. <laughs> um, that being said, um, I do want to, and I know my colleagues will emphasize this, is while there's community, we're all part of community, you know, the alderman is the leading the charge. Mm -hmm. The department is there to help the alder persons figure out their plans for their community. And as you know, coordinating with the region. So, right. you know, I have, I have, uh, I have a good, uh, Michael Berkshire is, I think is, is my person and he's at a moment's notice, 
you know, I had a little, uh, I've been in, in a planning from day one in regards to master plans, and now we're on our second 10-year plan. So it's kind of, you know, I'm a little bit ahead of where uh, some other communities are, and our community is developed a, a little further than most. Um, but, you know, I, I know that I've heard that the alderman is the elected representative, and he or she is the one that stands in front of their voters every four years, and, um, and the, we are, number one, responsible for the quality of life in our neighborhood, you know, and um, so I'm sure some of my colleagues might want to comment on that. Um, I see on page 537, we talk about the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. Am I seeing less money for the recommendation in 2022 on page 537? 62 million in 21 to 50? Uh, that, is, that is correct. And, and why is that? Maybe because we had a banner year in the last, or last couple of years, I guess? Or? I mean, well, I can certainly uh, ask for some help on this, but um, we can, we get access to the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund uh, dollars when permits are pulled. Uh, and uh, because of COVID and the lack of uh, building new building permits being pulled, we, uh, our estimate now is uh, down in that, um, that area. Yeah. Um, it looks like almost 20% down. That is correct. Um, Matt? Um, <clears throat> Matt Schmitz, Deputy Commissioner of Finance. Uh, so yeah, just like with the uh, Affordable Housing Opportunity Fund revenues, this is uh, very volatile and kind of subject to market conditions. So as a result of the pandemic and the slowdown, we saw a dip in revenue. Um, that was, we received a small uh, corporate subsidy to make sure that we can maintain operations in the fund. Um, but we do see with the pickup in permits and development, the revenue rebounding uh, into next year. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll exceed that 50 million in this year. Uh, so, Commissioner, you also talked, I know it's, it's public information now, you have a, a separate design review mm -hmm. um, process. Could you, um, could you elaborate a little bit on that and again, uh, I've heard a little bit from my colleagues and or developers, it's just one more hurdle to do business with the city. Um, sure, I'd be happy to elaborate on this. Uh, we have, I've been uh, monitoring how our design review process has been going and how, quite frankly, to uh, accelerate the, the pace um, and um, looked nationally to what other cities, comparable cities, did in terms of increasing their bandwidth. Uh, we have a very small staff that does this review. Uh, and the idea of a peer uh, to peer review process uh, that can at least articulate some of these issues that are um, kind of guiding principles for our department um, is the primary reason behind it. So this committee um, has met uh, twice, they've reviewed three proposals, um, two that are downtown and one which is an affordable housing in Alderman Mitz's ward. Um, at that same time, I think we may have reviewed 36 proposals. So these are, are really meant to help us guide some of the public um, amenities that we hope and to have a conversation no matter where you are in the city uh, that speaks to the quality that we're trying to achieve. Well, good, uh, good luck to you. Uh, the, 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 the real question in some degree is, um, and I'm, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm on plan commission, so every project that actually gets to the, to the docket, uh, are you trying to tell me that they've all been reviewed by the design committee no. prior to going? No, in fact. So who gets in and who gets reviewed and who doesn't? I'm sorry. Well. We, we, we established uh, criteria uh, that has to do with either super tall buildings, um, buildings that have significant public funding in them. Uh, and so the uh, two tower project um, in Fulton Market um, came before the committee because it had a public park component. Uh, and we were able to work with that developer uh, to increase uh, the public park space. Uh, and literally they are on the October docket. So within 90 days, they were able to move the project forward, which is exceptional for a project of that size and complexity. 
Madam Chairwoman, can I just make a final th comment yes, and question? Yes. Okay, so I've talked to a number of developers <laughs> in general that said, we're done with Chicago for a myriad of reasons. So you're the planning commissioner, you're in charge of planning and economic development, we're all involved. What is your response to that comment? Because I've heard it, it, if I've heard it once, I've heard it 40 times in the last two years. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate the observation and uh, I, I can understand how uh, any new process that you put in place um, creates uncertainty. Uh, our job has been uh, to use this as a tool to expedite the process. Um, we know that the engine uh, that is producing a lot of the economic well-being of the city you know, are in these four or five uh, wards, and so we're hyper-conscious about trying to expedite this. And it's a pilot, and we're going to see, but uh, the proof will be in can we move those projects more quickly as a result of having this uh, higher level conversation. Uh, that's, the, that's been the goal, and that's what I'd like to um, measure its effectiveness on. Thank you, and thank you for you and your staff. Um, appreciate working with you guys. Thank you. Hi, and uh, women. Uh, Assistant Commissioner Nina Inwoody, I just want to clarify a, a number. So since September, from January to September, we've actually reviewed 67 um, projects uh, at CPC, but only three have gone to COD. So I just wanted to clarify that number. It's a relatively new new layer, layer I think. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, just to clarify, the Design Review Committee, what's the formal name of that? The formal name is the Committee on Design. Okay. And do we have um, written uh, guidelines for when a project is uh, subjected to that review? Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. Uh, um, Gerardo Garcia, you want to speak to that? It's on our website. This mic. Yep. There oh, you go. Oh, there we go. For the record, Gerardo Garcia, Deputy Commissioner for the Bureau of Planning and Design. Um, and yes, we do have uh, those criteria published um, on the city's website, uh, available to anyone for download. Um, along with an explanation um, and detailed outline of the process for COD. Um, and as the commissioner mentioned, um, you know, so far the committee has convened uh, twice, reviewed three projects, uh, and two are very much on their way towards uh, certainly receiving design approval and uh, shortly thereafter a uh, um, plan commission agenda. Could you briefly, um, you know, maybe just inform us of some of the criteria for review? I mean, I heard the commissioner mention super tall buildings and buildings that have, uh, or projects that have, I guess, city financing. Yeah, um, and so we really focused on uh, projects that do have city financing and use city resources, so that is one of the criteria. Um, we also wanted to capture projects that we deem to be character impacting, so Tall buildings, as defined by our zoning code, uh, super talls would be within that. Um, along with that are uh, projects that are adjacent to um, special corridors or historic landmark districts, um, as well as projects that trigger um, uh, mega PD development, so larger PDs. Okay, well, through the chair, because uh, can you just send us Absolutely. Um, a list of what that criteria is? is? Okay, Absolutely. moving right along, um, Alderman Raboris. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, sir. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Cox, for being here with us. Um, um, as the sidekick for our chairman of zoning over there, uh, I get to talk to some of our zoning administrators. I'm very grateful for Patrick Murphy and Steve Valenziano for working with us. The about a year ago, I think it was, um, I could be off a few months, you walked with, with myself uh, at one point and also with uh, Alderman Cardona on the 31st in that area around Milwaukee, Pulaski, Belmont area. And, and since then, we're getting 
uh, I've been meeting uh, either bi-monthly or monthly with James Harris, and I, and I appreciate that because there's some good uh, discussions being held, and, mm -hmm. I, and I want you to know that. Um, so we're hoping to do something uh, soon, an, an RFP there in that area, because it's, it's just a project that's uh, it's waiting. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't have any questions other than uh, thank you, and please continue working with, with, with your plans on the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, and thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Alderman. Uh, we are looking forward to issuing the RFP for uh, the site that you're talking about in, um, in Avondale. Uh, and I think we now have a framework. Um, thanks to your advocacy, we also have the support of the property owner who is willing to do this. And now we have a year plus of experience of issuing these RFPs. So I'm looking forward to working with you on that. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Uh, Alderman Burnett. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Uh, of course, um, I want to commend you and your staff. Uh, I feel like I, um, I work in your department because I'm always <laughs> working with your staffs uh, all the time um, and in a lot of meetings. So, yeah, I noticed the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, from what I understand, decreased by $12 million, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, one of the questions I asked the um, budget director, I'm sure you heard it, uh, what's more important, economic development or design, right? That's always the question, economic development or design. Economic development bring about neighborhood opportunity funds. It bring about ARO money. Design don't. You know what I'm saying? I know you guys are architects and y'all care more about design. Um, and please don't call the buildings in my ward towers because I'll never get them voted on <laughs> if you say towers. Please don't say towers, okay? <laughs> Just say buildings. <laughs> but um, so you got to get a balance. We need the economic development, uh, not only for our, our city budget, but we also need it for the great things that you're doing with the Invest Southwest. And, and for the affordable housing that we're building uh, throughout the city. So we need to figure out a way of keeping more of a balance. Um, you know, I recall, I think one of my last meetings I had um, with Cindy and, uh, and Melvin, and we were postponing everything in that meeting. E everything on the list was being postponed because of design, right? It had to go back to the table because of design, and I made a statement, I said, is this the Department of Planning or the Department of Design? You know what I'm saying? So we need to, we need to get it right, you know? Because um, we got to think about how we hold up the city. We've been blessed this year. We've been blessed because of, we, we've been hurt because of the pandemic. But we've been blessed because of the pandemic because we're getting money from the federal government. If we wasn't getting money from the federal government right now, we would be in trouble. I mean, we would literally be in trouble right now. So we have to, um, you know, we, we got to think about the future next year this time. You know, I don't want to be voting on no tax increases. You know, and I think the rest of us feel the same way. We have the tools. We have the momentum of development going on in the city. We need to keep it moving, man. You know, and um, you know, and and maybe it's because I'm used to moving fast. I don't know, because uh, you know I've been uh, doing this for 26 years, and I've been running ever since I've been 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 in this uh, position, building up my area. Uh, so, to me, design is an eyes of the beholder. You know, I'm a former, I'm a I'm a draftsman by trade, right? I don't know if you know that. Didn't know that. You didn't know that, yeah. <laughs> I'm a mechanical draftsman and, and work for the county highway department as a draftsman. So I understand design, but I also understand the bottom line for the city of Chicago and for us to exist as a city is by making things happen and being competitive with other cities. And, and, uh, and, and in, in some instances, being competitive with other countries, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the food market right now is one of the hottest area uh, areas in the world right now, uh, which is, I think, 
has been sustaining us. Um, but we can we can move a lot faster. And um, so I, I just want to just, you know, everybody, I know, I work with your folks. I work hard with your folks. We work hard. I mean, I'm in too many meetings with them, right? So they're working hard. I'm working hard, you know, but um, we got to keep working hard, and we got to work harder and make things happen. That's all. And I think, um, you know, we got to gotta keep these developers uh, interested. Mm -hmm. I hear from... I hear it from a couple of different areas because my son is an investment banker, mm -hmm. right? So I hear it on different levels, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and with my discussions about uh, Chicago um, and, and people wanting to invest in the city. Uh, so we need to keep it moving right. in order to keep the money coming and making things happen and keeping people moving in the city. So other than that, you all are doing a great job. All your folks work hard. I mean, work hard. I mean, we be in so many meetings together. I think I talk to them more than I talk to my family at home, you know, <laughs> but because um, we have so many things going on in the war, but but we can, we got to step it up, man, if we want to stay competitive. I don't know if you think about competing with other cities, you know, first of all, first I compete with all my colleagues, right? That's how all of us keep ourselves going, right? But then we compete with other cities um, and try to be competitive with New York and LA and all those other places, and uh, we gotta we gotta think about all of it. I know you used to be mayor, you used to be a mayor, right? That's right. So you should understand that part. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No. So we wanna we wanna stay competitive and and bring that money in and balance our budgets and be able to uh, not have to have to increase taxes because we're all doomed if we have to do that. Uh, our livelihoods are at stake. And development is the foundation of our city uh, as far as uh, bringing capital to the city. We just got to keep it moving, man. That's right. all. I think, I think you, I, I, I want to tell you, I commend you on what you're doing with Invest Southwest. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's really making people have a very um, open mind about what could happen and how the community can change and is 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 making them see what it can be instead of what it is. Mm -hmm. I think that's unique. I, I appreciate all of the African-American contractors, young contractors that you're helping. I think you're doing a great job with all of that. But all of that can't happen without the money from the big developments that's going on in the city, right? And the more of those we keep going, the more money we'll have to do all those other things. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep continue to do that. Of course, I hear stuff from developers too. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it. But I mean, but you hear it from me. I'm mm -hmm. saying it now, <laughs> sure. right? But uh, we got to keep moving. We got to make it happen. They people need to know that Chicago is open for business, and we're gonna get your project done faster than New York, you know, faster than San Francisco. Right now, we keep mm -hmm. competing with uh, it was that in Tennessee, uh, what's that area near Tennessee? Huh? Nashville, Nashville. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, we're competing with Nashville, you know. And guys are telling me I'm going to Nashville, man. You know, literally they tell me that. Um, so we need to keep it moving. I think we're in, on a good track, you right. know. And, and I appreciate the fact that that development thing, because they the two buildings that went in there, I think came one I know came from my ward. Y'all kind of moved it fast, so I appreciate that. But it's in between stuff. Mm -hmm. We we, um, we got to. You know, we got to make it work. We can't, can't linger. We got to say, okay, try to do this, see if you can do that, and let's move. Let's move. Let's make it happen, okay? I, I, I completely agree with you, and, and I am constantly seeing the connection between the plan developments, uh, quite frankly, that are coming through your ward. Uh, I think you, we've managed more than 36 plan developments since I've been here through your ward. It's over $6 billion of investment. And every one of those are tied to the Opportunity Fund that then funds uh, entrepreneurship in the South and West Side. So the connection is very, very clear to me, uh, and that's partly why we're trying to stay on track uh, to expedite um, the, the process. Uh, now, I, I and my department talk about design a lot because we equ equate it with equity. We want good things to happen in all neighborhoods of the city. 
And so we have to lay out our expectations so they, they show up in the right way and honor the communities that we are hoping to create more development in. The downtown development get a lot of our attention, but was also interesting in the um, Committee on Design is that we had the Laramie Bank in Austin, uh, and we were able to have a conversation about honoring that community. So it's not just that we fawn over the things downtown and expedite them, we also want that same level of quality uh, in our neighborhoods. So uh, I appreciate you underscoring, uh, you are the engine of economic development for the city, and we thank you, <laughs> and we are, that's why we work so closely with you to make sure these projects continue to flow. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burnett. Alderman Austin. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. I, I don't have a lot of questions. Uh, Mine is, uh, I would like to leave our uh, brochure with you. I don't know if you're uh, aware of it, uh, but if not, I'd like to see you working on it, and we need to maybe possibly set up a meeting. I didn't bring this up in the Invest Southwest meetings, but uh, I really need you to um, chime into this. It's Department of Housing, and I did give it to uh, Commissioner Navarro, but I need you to put more meat into it. What document is that, ma'am? Because you're the Department of Planning. I'm going to give it to you. Okay. So that you'll have an opportunity to peruse through it to see what we're trying to do. But mm -hmm. in order for this to get off of the ground, and not just on paper, mm -hmm. we need you to input in it. Because uh, on the far south side, the only activities that I have seen thus far is in Pullman. We need to come across State Street. I agree. <laughs> because you know that the red line is coming in. I've That's spoken right. to you many times in regards to the medical district, although mm -hmm. you, 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 you're doing well on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know certain things take time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like to see this moving uh, in your department, mm -hmm. because you're the mover of all of the development mm -hmm. and partnership with uh, the Department of Plan, um, I'm sorry, Department of Housing. Um, I think that if we can set up a meeting where Commissioner Navarro and yourself mm -hmm. and us so that you can see how this can benefit the people on the far south side. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, I look forward to and that. And I'll give it to you before you leave. Excellent. And uh, I am glad that we finally have kicked off the uh, Roseland Medical District. Yeah. Uh, we're anticipating finishing that study uh, by the end of the year. Yes. Uh, and that will unleash $25 million dollars of investment. So uh, thank you and your staff for working closely with us. I think that framework is yes. a game changer. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Alderman Austin. Um, Alderman Talia Farrell. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner, I just wanted to uh, say I've seen such an improvement um, in your department from last year. Um, I can't thank your staff enough. Uh, because I think it may have been a recommendation or you may have just started uh, last year with, um, with the monthly meetings. Uh, but I can't thank you enough and you thank your staff enough uh, for the consistent updates and the consistent meetings that we've been having. Uh, so I am extremely um, um, I'm happy about what you're doing in your department. Well, thank you. Also, um, you know, along with the Southwest, uh, that plan is coming along um, very well um, on the west side of Chicago. So keep up the good work. Um, uh, Chip, uh, Jim, I, I can't name them all, uh, but I can tell you that um, they are very, very um, in tune with um, keeping us, uh, or keeping me at least, mm -hmm. uh, abreast of what's going on in Ward, giving me updates. So I, I do want to thank your team and want to thank you for the great work um, that I see going on the west side of Chicago. So thank you. Well, I thank you, and I, yeah. I, I took your comments uh, to heart, and I think uh, you're starting to see uh, the difference that it makes. Uh, I'm looking forward in the next year of uh, a significant development opportunity uh, within your section of Chicago Avenue, um, so look forward to working with you on that. I appreciate it, Commissioner, and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alderman Tally Farrell. Alderman Spazzato. You know, I, I want to um, acknowledge Alderman Moore for uh, uh, the quorum count. Alderman Spizzato. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't, I don't have any budget questions. Just a simple thank you, Commissioner. I always hate mentioning people's names, but I feel the name to mention a few names. Um, being the uh, chairman of the, uh, the happy committee, as I say, we'll just call it that. Um, always appreciate the help I get from Keith and Nelson and Meg. And always uh, Noah's also a, a great guy for me to deal with. And then Patrick, although I don't think he technically works for you, but uh, he's awesome. He always, anytime I call him, uh, he answers the phone, he calls right back. So we all appreciate you, uh, Pat. So um, with that, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, we need to turn the city around and we need your help. So um, appreciate it. keep up the good work. I appreciate the ride uh, a couple of weeks ago and hopefully we could find something to do in my award. Excellent, and, uh, and happy birthday to you, by the way. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome, Alderman. Who bought those cookies? <laughs> I don't know, nobody. Back there. <laughs> it's the sign. We're gonna find out, Alderman, uh, Alderman Spizzato. Alderman your... Osterman. Like the cookies, Madam Chairman, or did? <laughs> I like the happy birthday part of it, the be on time part. <laughs> Thanks for being on uh -huh. time. Almost. <laughs> uh, Commissioner, thank you very much. Um, it's good to hear that you're going to have some planning staff so that Alderman Spazzato can build something in his ward. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but let me, uh, let me say I appreciate the way you've uh, created the planning sections of the city, and I think you brought planning back to planning. Um, I think that's something that I think former previous budget hearings, I think you heard from us loud and clear. And I think the folks that I've worked with in my community have been very helpful in um, crystallizing some ideas that hopefully we will see come to fruition. Um, with Invest Southwest, can you provide through the chair um, what I would say is a, uh, a report of kind of all the projects and, you know, geographically as far as, and kind of just give us an update on it? Because I think um, unless we're in those communities, we hear about them, we encourage, we're encouraged by them, we support them, but it's helpful for us to understand what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions I have on the budget side is, there's money for commercial corridors and responsive neighborhood activation investments. Mm -hmm. And I think it's to the tune of 50 million plus. Is that for communities around the city of Chicago? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, uh, it will give us the latitude to move outside of the TIF-funded um, Invest Southwest effort, efforts. Uh, the 12 corridors that we're working in in Invest Southwest, um, uh, the incentives that we're able to offer are directly related to uh, TIF dollars, the increment. Uh, generated in those. Uh, there are many, many needs for corridor reactivation um, outside of those TIF areas. And so that 50 million will allow us to go where the opportunities uh, reside. And that uh, is uh, meant to be a resource um, across the city. So is it, just so I'm being perfectly clear, is that for areas that are not TIF covered in Invest Southwest areas, or is that basically across the whole city? It, it is across the okay. uh, whole city. So I, I want to follow up with you on that because we have, uh, we're going through Red Purple Modernization, which is uh, the largest CTA construction project ever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's put a significant hardship on some of my commercial corridors, Argyle Street, Bryn Mawr, to, to name a few. Um, like to work with you to see what you have in mm -hmm. mind in those. And I think D case also has a program, I'll call it corridor activation, where it's it's more pop-ups and uh, things like that. So I think uh, I'll follow up with you um, on that. Um, one of the issues that came up with um, Mayor's Office of Disabilities and as well as housing, I think I'm gonna follow up with the Mayor's Office policy folks, relates to, to corridor, or. Uh, vacant commercial storefronts. Mm -hmm. We're not post COVID um, in the next decade gonna activate all of the commercial corridor, commercial spaces that we have in our city. And I think trying to find a way in each ward or a pilot regionally that we say, 
here is a stretch of commercial storefronts that has not been vacant for 10 years mm -hmm. and activate those f with accessible housing helps, I think, bring people to the streets and adds more accessible housing with the sh city needs desperately. So I think that's something I'd like to follow up with you on. Um, one critical element relates to land and activating the land for housing. Um, and one key aspect of that r r relates to environmental remediation. Mm -hmm. In the budget, I think the mayor has something to the tune of $80 million. Yes. How is that going to be focused on? Um, how is that going to be focused on with with dealing with cleaning the land that could be activated for housing? Um, very very important question. And finally, we will have the kind of resources to make a significant impact in that. I, I'd like uh, Kathy um, to respond to the 87 million that's um, allocated for this topic. Yes. Thank you. Um, Kathy Dickett, Deputy Commissioner for Citywide Planning. So in the Chicago Re Recovery Plan, there is an $87 million bucket for vacancy, vacant land. And the way that between DPD, AIS, and law, we've been looking at doing that is actually scanning the, um, doing an environmental review of all 10,000 properties, which we do not have. So part of the problem at why it takes so long is because every property needs its own single review. So you're doing the same thing over and over. So the idea is to do the reviews of the land by block, and we've already developed a way to do that. And so we will know the environmental condition, the basic environmental conditions of all the city property, and we can categorize it as this it can be sold as is at one end, and then these are very problematic at another end. And in the middle, there's, th there's properties that may need to have some sort of remediation so that you can then focus on the properties that, are mo that, ha that have no problems right away for any use besides affordable housing. So here's, here's, I guess, the main point through my eyes mm -hmm. and through my role as the Housing and uh, Real Estate Committee chairman is um, there, I think there needs to be ownership or a point person who's going to manage that inner, inner department um, coordination because you understand the sense of urgency, right, the moment in time we're in. My colleagues that have vacant land, they have long since understand the sense of urgency beyond it's more in the frustration part now or Ben um, trying to find a way to streamline that from a mm -hmm. governmental perspective to get that land clean and activated yep. then we could see some real gains which can build momentum that you and everyone else wants so I think if 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 we could do a follow-up with that and I'll extend it to members of the housing committee and the chairman of the mm -hmm. budget committee and others just so that we understand how it's going to work because this whole budget's built on using a lot of money, a lot of federal money, and putting it all in the right place. But the real linchpin for all of us is how is it going to work from a governmental perspective? So it's got to work. It, uh, Nina Itamudia, Assistant Commissioner. Um, as we've been working on the federal package, both ARP and bond, something that we're looking forward to, although we have ideas on paper, is actually working with the aldermen and with the community to help develop how these programs will be implemented. So again, even with the commercial corridor, you know, I, I have lots of information about how we want to revitalize the commercial corridor. As, as Commissioner Cox mentioned, we want to be able to do that without having to have a TIF district so that we can expand our efforts. But we look forward to actually working with you to develop how that program looks. And so we, we will be doing that. I got it. Um, I'm just, I'll, I'll put this out there that corridors work when there's people that live a block away that can spend money on the corridor. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't have the corridor without the people. Get the people, corridor will stay. Um, last thing in the, in the interest of time, because I'm at the two minute mark, is um, I got to put this to you. Um, we have land in Chicago. Uh, we have a, a franchise that wants to go to a suburb, Arlington Heights. I would ask you, in your leadership role, with all the priorities that you have that I think are more important than a football team, um, look for the opportunity for us to look at land that could keep these get the Bears in Chicago. Because um, I don't want to drive to Arlington Heights. Um, I don't think anyone I know wants to drive to Arlington Heights. And I'm sure there's some people from Arlington Heights that don't want to see a bunch of Chicagoans coming out to Arlington Heights. But we have a lot of land, and I think that before that door closes, mm -hmm. I would ask you to do everything in your power to look at what options there are to keep them here that could be an economic driver 
for parts of our city that could use it and it could work. And if there's a win-win there, then let's find that win. Um, the Chicago White Sox are playing tonight in the playoffs, not the St. Petersburg White Sox. And that's because <laughs> people tried to make it work and they made it work. Um, so I just ask you, with all the priorities you have of lifting up communities, which is where the priority has to be, um, let's not give up on trying to find a place to keep these guys in Chicago. Madam Chair, that's it. That's all you have today? <laughs> you, that's good. Okay, so I want to follow <laughs> up on the uh, discussion about land. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Alderman Osterman was talking about uh, remediation, mm -hmm. but I'm more concerned at this point about the l amount of time it takes to get a city-owned lot mm -hmm. into the hands of a, an adjacent neighbor or someone on the block. It takes too much time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I hope you have some help in the budget for Nelson, because he mm -hmm. can't handle everything that's on his plate now. And so I'd like for you to discuss how uh, you're going to streamline that yeah. process. It should not take a 18 months, a year, yeah. to turn over property, sometimes two, to turn over a property to someone who's loving that land, cutting grass for us, cleaning it up. They need to be able to access it. So if you could discuss yeah. that. Um, Madam Chairman, I share your frustration um, with uh, the pace in which we are able to turn these properties over. I do think that Kathy Dickett began to answer that when she talked about going block by block and doing the entire assessment of the inventory of properties I there. I don't care about the entire assessment of the inventory. I'm talking about the individual sale of a property that is under ANLAP mm -hmm. to an individual resident. Mm -hmm. We got to get it through that process less than 18 months. Um, yeah, Kathy, I've, would you like to chime in? Absolutely, Alderman. And, and again, I've started with the environmental because that is one of the places where we have been stuck. So even that it is going to ANLAP or for the dollar sales, we have been stuck there. We have a process now with AIS and law to identify to get this is this is what this is the environmental assessment and we can move forward. We are prioritizing those that are that have been stuck for more than a year. And we totally, totally sympathize I mean this has been a problem. And we are totally on it, but we have to get this. What is the environmental and these screens? So we know we even have some that we haven't done. We have a bucket of those that are done. We can move those. And yes, we do need more assistance to move these properties. And as part of that vacancy program, we are looking at getting assistance through that, that both for helping consultants, local and local realtors to work with us, and um, temporary staff. Sounds good, but I would like to get through the chair a list of the uh, number of properties that are currently backlogged in the department uh, by ward. Mm. Thank you for that. We will. Uh, let's see here. Who's next? Alderman Kappelman. And I want to acknowledge Alderman Beal and Alderman Smith. Oh, you were, you were here earlier. Sorry, Alderman Smith. Alderman Beal has arrived. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner good afternoon. Cox. Um, I, I have to start out by saying I'm just very impressed with your leadership and with the direction of DPD. Um, it's, it's easy for your department to keep focused on a myriad of developments all over. You step back and you look at the big picture because that, and that enables you to also focus on these other projects. So it all comes together. It's a very, a city is a very complex organization and um, it's very, very difficult. So you have this team that's, that's working with you that puts all this together and, mm -hmm. and that is amazing. Um, I also want to give a good shout out to this uh, regional team I have on the north side. I meet with them once a month. Uh, I have developers who come to me and they'll show me a development and they want to know, do I like the design? And you know what? I've always wanted to be an architect. 
but I'm not one. <laughs> and I, so it's this team that's really been, been really helpful. Um, also Melvin, Melvin is really good. Uh, uh, but um, they're also good when, uh, for instance, I have two not-for-profits that wanna do a, a project in, in my ward. Mm -hmm. And I know I can bounce that off of uh, 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 Catherine, uh, Michael, and Paul. Um, and, and they will give me some good insights and some direction of where I need to go to, to, get, to get this done because it's extraordinarily difficult to get a not-for-profit, as we know with Sarah Circle, to get off, that, get off the ground. And I also want to thank you and this team for your work to improve the design for Sarah Circle. Um, uh, people who live in affordable housing deserve to have good affordable housing. And I remember you talking about that during the plan commission right. and, and you did it. So that, that's really important to me that we really honor and respect those people from all different income levels. Um, I also like this Southwest uh, initiative, Invest Southwest, mm -hmm. um, just because it's really focusing on institutional racism. And if what, what some of my colleagues who don't live on the South Side or West Side, what we are been starting to realize is that by investing th this Invest Southwest program, that's benefiting us too. Mm -hmm. We all benefit when, when th those areas of the city also get the help they need. Um, so I've, I've been trying to come up with a question, <laughs> um, and it's hard because I'm very impressed, but the city of Chicago is a city of neighborhoods. We have 77 neighborhoods, uh, and so I, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, wh what, is, what do you believe makes a good neighborhood <laughs> when it comes to the mix of housing, when it comes to retail? when it comes to uh, the walkability of a community, knowing that every community is so, so different. But what are your thoughts? No, no, I appreciate your question. I appreciate you uh, giving a shout out to the team on the north side. I think they are um, enjoying their work with you. And as a result, we've seen more planned developments uh, move through your ward. So just thank you for supporting them and, and adding them as members of your team. Um, I think a lot of what we hope for neighborhoods is uh, encapsulated in the Invest Southwest. We think people have a right to have local amenities, places to shop, uh, places to frequent within their neighborhood that arguably is walkable from their home. Uh, and so we purposefully try to shine a light on increasing the number of neighborhood amenities. I think also we want people to be able to um, uh, have housing choice um, within every community area. So multifamily housing opportunities, um, as well as single family and everything in between. Uh, and we purposefully structured the We Will um, Chicago plan uh, as an opportunity to try to get to some common understanding across the city of how we want our neighborhoods to grow. So this will be uh, a chance for us uh, to have one conversation uh, played out multiple times over the city uh, with regard to what makes a viable, uh, thriving uh, neighborhood. So I look forward to that conversation um, with all the aldermen across the city. Uh, it, is the, it is the question that's on most people's mind. How can we create a quality of life, uh, a thriving, regenerating neighborhoods uh, across the entire city. Thank you. I think one of the things that we struggle with is that when a proposal does come our way, um, the residents in the area, the, their complaints are about density and parking. Um, they want one-to-one -one parking, if not two-to-one -one parking. Uh, you can't have too much parking. And um, uh, they're also concerned about their view. They want, don't want to lose their view. And, and that's a struggle for all of us because we know that um, housing gets more expensive when we put more requirements and we lengthen that time. It just it takes, uh, it takes a lot of time. So another reason why I'm just so thankful for um, this regional team is that they 
not only educate me, but they help, I use them to educate our community so that when we have to make tough decisions, they have a, 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 a they can make a more informed uh, decision about what their own opinions are. Mm -hmm. That's very, very helpful. Well, I just I appreciate the fact that you uh, um, you held you held firm to uh, a number of uh, uh, criticisms around the density that you were allowing uh, and and uh, demanding uh, affordability, demanding quality, and it, it made a difference. Uh, it made a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome, Alderman Kappelman, Alderman, Vice, excuse me, Vice Chair Silverstein, followed by Alderman Thompson. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon. How are you, Commissioner? Good, thank you. Good. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to you. It's been really a pleasure working with you and your staff. Um, I'm very excited about the Western Avenue study. I have been and continue to be, but as we're all saying, we need to make sure that that follows through into new development for the neighborhood. Um, it's Michael Berkshire and his team are great. Everybody's very responsive, and I just wanted to thank you for the attention up in the 50th Ward. And thank you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this study, uh, the Western Avenue Corridor that touches multiple, multiple um, wards. Uh, with a very specific eye towards unleashing um, opportunities for redevelopment along the corridor. Uh, and so I think we will soon know what are those sites uh, that should be RFP'd and bring a level of, uh, so we have some PDs to celebrate in your ward as well. Looking forward to that. I am too. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Silverstein. Alderman Thompson. Madam Chair, um, Commissioner, good to see you. Uh, I do want to compliment your your team, uh, especially the uh, the finance team and Chip and Tim and everyone that's been fantastic this year. We've had uh, you know the Starbucks at 31st, 39th with uh, the bank, and then the Remova Theater starting. Uh, and I'll see you Tuesday. That's right. We're going to be breaking some ground. Uh, yes. Uh, so we we uh, look forward to that. Um, <clears throat> a couple of uh, questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, just on the coordination, I, I know we also have our meetings, and I think that's really productive. The communication is very good. Um, we've had situations where we, we have uh, in our community, if it's a 25 by 125 foot lot and it's a zoning change, we have a community meeting. People come out. We require that they provide the design of the house they're going to build. Mm -hmm. It's an old uh, Aldrin Jean Schulter tactic that I then have them sign a uh, covenant. So what they show is what they build. The problem is sometimes is when we go to a plan development and we have similar meetings and then it gets into the planning department. We got to make sure that that coordination because what, what's committed to in the community meetings and to us needs to be communicated to you guys so that you know where we are so we don't redesign what we've all agreed to mm -hmm. and I think we can get, we're getting there on a lot of the design mm -hmm. and it's a two-way street so uh, I just want to mm -hmm. put that if there's a way we could put a check in there mm -hmm. like we're doing now with some of the communication mm -hmm. uh, to make sure um, uh, I had a question regarding the the vacant lots I know that's been talked about in the chair uh, mm -hmm. has mentioned um, <coughs> The only question I, I would have, we're going to do this study on environmental. We're going to spend all this money on environmental. Yeah. And in a year, it's going to be outdated. Anyone that comes in to buy that property, they're not going to rely on a report that's a year old. Why are we spending the money? Are, are we out one marketing? Do we have a, a, a brokerage firm that's out marketing all of the lots? And then it's caveat emptor, the buyer beware. Put the onus on the buyer of the property. We'll sell it to them for a dollar. If, there's, if they discover there's environmental... Uh, then we could have that discussion, but I, I, I'm I'm a little confused as why we want to spend the money on the upfront. There could be a very good reason, and that's my question to you. Sure, I mean, yes, uh, Kathy, Kathy's really excited to answer this. To, so there must to, be a good to answer, but I, you know, I know that we have a number of brokerage companies uh, that, by and large, uh, are you know on the list of pre-qualified 
brokerage firms. What we're trying to figure out is how we can attach or requi require them to have local real estate uh, knowledge on their teams so that when they go into particular communities, uh, they can correctly assess. And I, it, it, I know um, there is a way that we can make, um, bring that local knowledge onto one of the tasks that they are asked to take into consideration. Um, Kathy, do you want to elaborate? Sure, I can elaborate on that and the uh, previous question. So yes, we do want to try to pair a large brokerage real estate firm with local realtors, which is something we would ask them to identify and work with. So it'd be, it wouldn't be MBE, WB requirement, those are standard, but it would be as part of your work identifying those, those firms. And to your point about the environmental study, it's not a study exactly. So there are records that we t typically you use for a phase one where you look at all the old Sanborn maps, which are fire insurance maps. What you will see is whether a building was one time a gas station or a manufacturing plant. And yeah, today we, we may only see it as a residentially zoned lot. So that, that, that information does not change. So what we will know is the past uses of all the land. So what, what happened sometime in the past is some lots were manufacturing, they were zoned residential. So when we look at residential lots, they, our zoning map shows them residential, but they were one something else. Based on a review of thousands of these from the past, less than a 1% are that, but we do want to find those lots. So it's, it, that, data, that information will, it's all evergreen. It will always be the, what the past was. Okay, and I guess my question to you is, so what? I mean, if I, if I know and I'm selling the property, I really don't care what it was used for. The buyer <coughs> would want to know that. And so why don't we put the onus back on the buyer and their lawyers and their team could look at it. Well, we want to know that we're selling property that was always residential and that is something that we could sell as is. But we, the city, do not want to sell something that we, we have learned that it had a record um, of some kind of past industrial use. So, but again, that will be a much smaller set of property than the ones that, that we have that information on. And it'll be, it, people will not then necessarily have to, they'll know which ones are much more likely to be clean and fine versus the ones where we may have a problem. We always get stuck on the ones that have a problem. Meanwhile, most of them don't. Okay, I, I don't wanna to take too much more time. We, we have this discussion offline. Like we have at 37th and Morgan, they're doing a, a, a development. There was an old building, a brick warehouse building that was there. The new developer, you would presume the soils would be solid, and they weren't, so we had to have compaction. And in fact, what they discovered was that was filled from the Chicago fire. Okay. But that's the buyer's issue, not necessarily us as a seller. And so, um, we could have a discussion offline as to, and, and a bigger question is, you know, a lot of these uh, d projects, uh, I, I have some, although we've sold a lot of our properties, mm -hmm. uh, but where you have a lot of the residential sized lots is sort of what's the, that vision, I think working with those local uh, alder persons uh, is really what has to ha happen, I think, is to have that discussion on how those should be developed. And I think what I rely on in the meetings is to say, you know, bring ideas to us. I mean, there's certain things we hear, mm -hmm. certain things that I do, because as part of my responsibility, I think, it is to try to listen to the community and develop the way they are asking for. Um, and that might not be the density that you may think, Commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, or ULI or CMAP, we've had them all come in, and I say to them, we want to engage the retail. Please don't tell me at the end of the study to build high-rise buildings to have more density to drive, because that's not what that part of, for example, Bridgeport is looking for. Sure. We're looking for engaged retail, but it's mostly a bedroom community. So I think to be specific. If I can just touch on um, the ad hoc, this committee on design. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I've also heard from uh, folks just the concerns about um, the delay. Um, I mean, my first thought was that potentially is, is the conflicts. Is you have one architect critiquing another architect's designs. 
The way I look at it, Commissioner, that's your responsibility. You can internally, if you want to have discussions, you talk to your team. We've got some talented people in the department to have that and to weigh in on that. Um, but I, I just. Um, no, I, I mean, I appreciate um, the, this, the uneasiness because it is a new process, uh, and that's why we're, you know, calling it a pilot. I know, um, you know, Melvin Wesley has had considerable experience in, the, in this space. Maybe I should uh, uh, expand the conversation and allow you to uh, uh, offer uh, some insights. Thank you. For the record, Melvin Wesley, first Deputy Commissioner. Um, Alderman Thompson, thank you for, for that, that observation. Um, it has been, I think, a, a, a major concern that we're able to assist, and again, as I think has already been conveyed, several projects. Um, go through our ordinary process. It's a very small percentage of projects that are um, being forwarded through the Committee on Design Review process. I think that there is a lot of ambivalence and concern on the part of the development community uh, here that this is going to be a major either hurdle or stumbling block in the process. We'd like to believe, though, it is actually an opportunity for um, streamlining, uh, particularly when we're looking at projects that fall um, in all the categories that have been discussed, including those projects that are very public facing. We, I think, are very concerned that the public realm be um, not just protected, but embellished. and. It's ours through the COD process, as well as our own in-house reviews, that it's not just design that we're trying to embellish and put forward, but we really are genuinely concerned about the public environment that keeps Chicago not just a great city in the Midwest, but a great worldwide destination. And part of all of that in, involves our being good stewards towards the process for getting projects through review in a timely fashion. And so far, for the two sessions that have convened, another will next week for the COD, they have been very helpful in propelling these projects uh, through the process and eliminating several, if not multiple, review processes that would have happened internally. And I appreciate that, Chair, if I could just add. I, I understand and I get that and I think to have a, a design team of, uh, of professionals to help give you some guidance, mm -hmm. but I, I think there's a potential inherent conflict in specifically commenting on another architect or another developer's project um, and I think internally, if they can give you guidance on, on parameters, that then helps, and then we rely on you folks as our professionals to give that feedback. So thank you. And we can talk offline. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, everyone, thank for you. all your great work. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Thompson. Alderman uh, Hairston, followed by Alderman Curtis, followed by Alderman Mitz and Moore. Thank you. Good afternoon, Good Commissioner. Good afternoon. Good to see you. You know I have one question for you, right? Okay. Do you know what that one question is? It's <laughs> no. the same question I asked you last year. Okay. So when you first arrived and we talked about 71st Street and we, you talked about your vision and what we were going to do with the community planning process and you said we were going to get, get the study because we've got tons of studies on 71st Street. Mm -hmm. We've got almost 30 years of studies, but what we don't have is a product and what you told me is that I would have a cocktail table book that the community would have a cocktail table book that would outline and give a timeline mm -hmm. of what was going to be happening what was and people could tear it out I still don't have that cocktail table book and we have not had another conversation mm -hmm. so where are we with that 
Um, well, thank you, thank you for <laughs> your, your, your memory of our conversation, because that was one of my, my uh, aspirations, um, which we... Did Michael Reese get in the way? All these other projects <laughs> get in the way? Because they're well, a lot further than I am. Right. Well, they were, the, setting the table, uh, first and foremost, was getting the 71st Street uh, TIF extended so that we can actually uh, fund uh, into the future projects uh, on that corridor. Uh, the projects that were in the pipeline, um, you know, took, uh, they took a, a, a back seat as a result of COVID. So we are now- They're in the trunk. They're not in the back seat, they're in the trunk. Well, I, <laughs> Underneath I, I, the spare tire. Well, I hear you and I, and I still believe that uh, 71st Street is the, the street to focus on. Uh, and you know we're working with those entrepreneurs that uh, have an idea for the entertainment center. We're back in touch I, I, to to uh, move that. And one project begets another, begets another. So um, I'm committed to continuing to working with you on that. Um, I want to have that. We're going to have that by by budget next year. I, I want to be able to hold up that but that book. There you go. Because uh, I think it's important to yeah. people. And it's important for people to know where the community is going. A lot of people get up and blow hot air, right? But this is something that is tangible, mm -hmm. something that is in writing, and like you said, that people can follow right, can and know where it's going to go. So we need to get that out from the trunk and get it back on the forefront. Agreed. Um, I'm glad to see that you are making changes in the policies and procedures for uh, land sales mm -hmm. because they take too long. Right. I mean, in, entirely too long. Mm -hmm. And well, and and I guess it's in other wards too. But you know, we do the slower walk on the south side than we do anywhere else. Um, the other comment is that I have about the NOF mm -hmm. recipients and the the awards, and what I've been hearing from some of the recipients is about it's unclear about the steps that are required to close on the funding. Mm. So, and that portion of the process is not put in writing. And any verbal communications that they're having with the department are inconsistent. So if you could codify those, mm. then I think people would be clearer and, and would understand what is expected, what they need to mm -hmm. do in order to close on the funding. Yeah, I would. Uh, may I ask uh, Jim uh, Harbin to talk about some of the process improvements that we've made to try Thank to address you. that very issue? Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, Commissioner. And how you doing, Alderman? I'm good. Uh, for the record, I'm Jim Harbin, Deputy Commissioner with the Department of Planning. And we've heard that same complaint, Alderman. And part of what we've done is literally made some significant changes to the program to make sure people have an opportunity to get to the finish line. We found early on uh, that people were in a hurry to get their application in before the deadline. And what we really started leaning into over the, over the course of the last two and a half years is once we get quality applications in the program, we are spending just as much effort helping them get through the process and get to the finish line. So part of that effort literally con uh, constitutes our team hand walking each one of those applicants through our process. And I heard a little earlier about communication being the key uh, to getting a lot of things done here with the city. Communication with our team allows those applicants to understand what is required of them to get to the finish line. So One of the, let me, let me, because hmm? of my time. Sure. <laughs> we, we can, t so would it make sense to have either somebody in the department dedicated or maybe one of the delegate agencies or, you know, one of the chambers to have a person that is dedicated to doing that? Would that be helpful? Yeah, well, we actually do that. We, we've shifted our, our program to allow for that to happen. So there are delegate agencies that not only can help them walk through the process, and we have team members not only with us, but Summer Corps helping those applicants. But even through the application process, we now have a virtual um, 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 opportunity, if you will, for those delicate agencies to literally walk those applicants through their application process, where they can watch in real time 
those applicants filling out the application. They can't hit submit until that applicant is ready, but they can make sure that that applicant is putting in the information that we require. Okay, so I'm sure gonna stop to you now because you've taken up too much of my minutes. But, <laughs> but, but, I, but I think it's a good thing, and I think that at some point, maybe, maybe later on this month, I can have you come to a ward meeting and you know, tell people yep. about the process, what it is, what tools are available, yep. where they can go for help. I think that would really go a long way because every, you're right, everybody is just trying to get the application yep. in and, and they may not have the support system in place mm -hmm. to, to, mm -hmm. to, you know, they're entrepreneurs, that's what they are. Yep. So okay. I'd be happy to. Uh, well, well taken and I look forward to, you know, hearing again some more recent stories about how it's working. Okay. I got some budget questions actually. So for your 0169 technical meeting cost mm. and that that went up to 65,000 and then your 0446 for the purchase of data processing office that's 47,000. Are those two combined? Um, for that, Zoom and and they, yeah. So they are, they are separated, yes, the line items went up to accommodate uh, professional development, additional technical services as you've assumed. Okay, I thought, I just wanted to check. Mm -hmm. um, and then can you provide uh, through the chair your 0135 for delegate agencies, mm -hmm. uh, your 0138 professional services, and the companies and whether they're MBE, WBE, mm -hmm. uh, the same for delegate agencies, and then your 140 accounts. And the so why is your one zero one four three your court reporting going down, or no, it's not. It is going. It went up. All right. And so then the court reporters, the name of the companies, and whether in their MBE WBE, okay. and you can provide those through the chair. Thank you. Okay. And you know you're st you have a great staff. They work very hard. Um, you know, my staff enjoys working with them. Um, so thank you. I'm just waiting for my cocktail book. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you, Madam thank Chair. You. I have no further questions. Thank you, Alderman Harrison. Uh, Alderman Curtis. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner. He's looking for me. Look at him. <laughs> oh, there you are, sir. <laughs> good to see you. Great to see you too. Um, I just want to thank you for your vision. Uh, I have a great time uh, every month. I, I meet with your team. Uh, within the last year, we actually got like five projects off the ground. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm really excited. Um, thank you. The the only the only issue. Uh, that I'm having again is it's, uh, that roof, um, porch and roof program. Uh, what can you say the, that the again? The roof program. That's housing, isn't it? Roof. Oh, it's it's the housing, housing, uh, the Department of Housing. Oh, yeah. oh, is that's with the Department of Housing? Yeah. In terms okay. of the the home repair. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, I will. But but it goes through planning somehow, right? Not that particular program, no. Okay. Mm. All right. But, but I'll, I'll, I'll certainly I'll take it back to them because I, I mean I know that they're. Um, that was um, uh, assist deputy commissioner, I believe her name. I think that's her title. Her name is Irma Morales. She addressed that issue um, when DOH was here this morning. Okay. Great. So again, I, I'm I'm really happy with your team, uh, and, and I, I really enjoy uh, working with, with with everyone over there. So, um, and and I'm, you know, uh, hopefully everyone take advantage of of um, you know you getting out. Actually, I have a a scheduled tour tomorrow also. So. Once again, thanks. Well, we appreciate you working with our with our team. I know we're we're doing some. Um, we've created a study for the Ford City Mall to look at uh, what the future of that is, and that's very very specific to some of our wards that uh, border um, 
uh, the edge of the city. So it's a, it's a unique contribution that you will be making to help study what the future of those um, shopping centers are. So thank you for uh, partnering with us on that. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. All right. Um, I'm going to use my chair prerogative. Um, and I know that Alderman Taylor has to leave. And so I'm going to ask, I know she's not on our committee, but um, while she's here. Thank you, Chairwoman. Commissioner. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, so invest in Southwest and back of the yard. Um, I'm honestly not happy with the results. I don't like how the announcement was done. And there seems to be no real collaboration or I'm not listened to when I feel like I'm giving you all recommendations on how this should have rolled out. This is back of the yard is a very touchy community. It's a black and Latinx ward. And so getting folks to work together and to really do some change making was going in the right direction and somebody dropped the ball. And so not sure if you want to address that. I've been waiting for two months for a meeting with you so that we can try to fix. Because my thing is that we may not agree um, about things that happened during those process. And to be honest, Invest in Southwest Inglewood and back of the yard has been a mess. Let's just call it what it is. And I need for, for you to listen to how we fix it if that makes sense. Um, I want to be able to work with your team. And one of the things that you asked, when I asked you in 2019, why did you come here? Um, you said you took a pay cut. And while I understood that completely, I sometimes don't think you understand the dynamics of Chicago, that we're neighborhoods, that how we handle and work with the community is very delicate. And I'm honestly taking the heat for this back of the yard mess that has happened. And so I'm asking that somebody from your team reach out to me um, and schedule a meeting with you ASAP. I don't know if you want to respond to that, but yeah, you can. No, we're, we are, um, uh, we're happy to do it. And I, I agree with you that um, community economic development uh, is, it's, it, it can be messy and trying to get the partnerships that we need between um, community developers uh, and uh, others, um, it, it's, it's trying. And I do think that uh, the outcome of uh, Back of the Yards, um, the fact that we have been able to get uh, $51 million of investment um, from that single site uh, and be able to bring two of the competitors two competitors that were competing against each other together. Uh, it did not happen by the time of the announcement. It happened soon after. And so y your recommendation is now a part uh, that connection now with uh, a Latinx entrepreneur uh, is an integral part of the, um, oh, the commissioned project. So I'd be happy to sit down with you and talk a little bit about how that happened. Uh, but they are formally now a joint venture partnership. And that would not have happened without your encouragement and guidance. Uh, again, it didn't happen by the announcement. It happened immediately after the announcement. But we, we do have a, a successful joint venture um, for Back of the Yards. Okay. Last year, there was a budget request through the budget for a specific initial in my more without any communication with me the Gatewood to Woodlawn competition and the Woodlawn overlapping consultants. Are there any specific fund requests for my ward this year? And so that whole gateway to Woodlawn, that was not a discussion with me. I'm not sure if it was one with Alderwoman Harrison, but it was not with me. And the community is upset because you all printed that. And so my thing is when you all decide something for the community, it's best to have that conversation with us. Mm -hmm. Because um, the community is now looking at me as the representative to say, you authorize this? And my answer is no, I didn't. It was not a conversation with me. And I honestly said to you all that I didn't want us to do any competitions because the community is still trying to figure out how it gets to stay. I got a lot of displacement going on in my wards. I got landlords currently telling their tenants, you got six months to move for no reason other than they know they can get more money for the units. And so you all are making announcements and doing stuff in the war without talking to the community, not just me, the community 
is, is keeping my community in chaos. And that's through the 20th Ward because now Washington Park is in chaos because now that the ground has been broken, now people want to come and buy lots in the community. And we need to have a conversation around you all selling the knots and then these people building $700,000 homes. They're building condos that nobody in my community afford. And then I don't, I'm not even notified that they're even building there. I just go in my community, I look up, there's a sign with my name on it that I had nothing to do with, and it just says they're gonna build something on the lot. And so how are you making sure, especially in my community, when you know what's going on, mm -hmm. that you're, you're, you're communicating that to me in my community? Mm -hmm. Well, again, um, I will say that we have, uh, I think the team uh, led by Lisa Washington has a very strong you know, relationship with, with your team. And so we have, a, we have a mechanism to be in constant communication. Uh, I, you know, some, of the, some of the examples that you cited, um, particularly around the 63rd and, uh, 63rd and Stony, Stony Island, that was a, uh, a student uh, competition. Uh, it was purely an ideas competition. I'm sure it confused a lot of residents, uh, but it was simply an academic exercise. Uh, and, you know, we, we tried to use that as an opportunity to at least have that conversation. Um, but I agree it, it caused uh, confusion. There is no um, gateway um, initiative as it stands. It w there won't be one unless we are working uh, closely with you. So, but there was confusion about what the students were doing uh, in that particular case. I mean, I would like to just hold up that, um, you know, there have been at least three planned developments that your committee uh, has supported. Uh, and, you know, we're looking at over $158 million of investment. And some of that is largely due to um, make sure that as the Obama Presidential Center happens that there are community services and most of it's clustered right there uh, at 63rd and Cottage. Uh, so economic development of the kind that you have been supportive of is coming and I think it, you know, some of that offsets the private sector and what they might do in terms of building more um, costly housing. Uh, but the uh, park station development uh, around 60, 63rd and Cottage, that is your, your leadership pushing back on that and it's making a difference. How many consultants have you hired since being in, in your space, since, since being commissioner? To do planning studies? Yes. Uh, I'd, I'd have to get that you know, through the chair, but um, I'd be happy uh, to give a report out on the consultants uh, that we brought on, but they've mostly been up with uh, targeted studies, whether it be the, the Roseland Medical District in Austin's ward or the Western Avenue study uh, in Silverman's ward. Um, so when we are trying to plan in the future, we will often use consultants uh, to augment uh, our planning staff to get things done a little more quickly. So I really don't have a problem with the consultants. A lot of them are not from Chicago. And so they spend the first six months of me in the community time trying to figure out what Chicago is and its dynamics. And so I'm pretty sure there are plenty of consultants right here. And I love Nolan, I love, uh, who else do I have? I had somebody who just left. Sonia, I love the people that I have, hey Jim. I do, but I want us to hire people from actually from our community because it's not a good look that the city is now investing all this money and the very people who live here cannot benefit from it. It's, it's baseless. My last question is, and thank you, Chairwoman, I appreciate it. Um, you talked about investing Southwest has happened in, um, not every part of the ward with, uh, on the south and west sides. Mm -hmm. What is the development plan for the other communities you all missed? Well, I think that's a very good you know, question. I mean, we, I think in our effort to reestablish the value of planning, uh, we have had to focus our attention uh, in places where you know, residents can see uh, the development. So we have purposefully started on those 12 corridors uh, and um, 
the hope is, as, as people begin to see the change that's possible, that we can then go to many other corridors uh, that are in need. Um, you know, 63rd and Cottage is, is not an Invest Southwest corridor, but we're using the exact same principles, and you're starting to see the results of clustering those investments around uh, the station. Um, so we're, we're learning um, how to do this. Um, we're proving that um, diverse development teams will come to communities on the west and south side if, if we work uh, to introduce it and they come the right way. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, I, and, if, and if I could, Nina Inamudia, Assistant Commissioner, uh, with the federal funds that are coming in, the way we're divvying those up, we're looking, although we're looking at Invest Southwest, we're actually looking to use those funds outside of those areas and areas that we haven't been able, didn't have the resources to accommodate before. We're leveraging those resources to go into those communities that we have not been able to hit before, but still have the similar need. Is the plan to work with aldermen to say what your, and I'm sorry, Alderwoman, I know my time is up, mm -hmm. to say what those communities should look like? Because we, Absolutely. there was a lot of pushback about you took this community that was already kind of worked on and this one was left out that gets no attention. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's exactly what we were thinking about when we're, when we're outlining. But just as I said earlier, we're looking forward to working with the community and the aldermen to identify, like, where have we missed? Where could we use these funds? Where can we leverage our resources? Thank you both. Thank you, Alderman. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Taylor. Alderman Mitz, followed by Alderman Moore, followed by Alderman Smith. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Um, I can tell you right now, you can keep using those funds over in 37. <laughs> They didn't give them to me long before now. I'm just getting back what I should have had a long time ago. So just keep it coming. <laughs> keep it coming. You just on one street on Chicago Avenue. I got Division Street, North Avenue, I got other streets out there that are main third that have not had any investment done in. And we got the same problem, storefronts, vacant storefronts, and the community there are saying, well, they putting all this work on Chicago Avenue. How come we're not getting it? But we got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I, I let them know, just hold on. Um, we've done a lot of great work out, out in the neighborhood. Um, when you first came in uh, on the bus tour, I took Dorado and we went around. And everything we looked at is uh, either they're coming up or they, I'm still cutting ribbons. In fact, uh, I, I let one slip past you all on Chicago and Pulaski. We get ready to open up a BMO Harris Bank there. I think they got off your radar somewhere. Too many projects, so for me, it's not too many. It just keeps me busy. Yeah. More than I like to, but it's some good work. Uh, all the meetings that we do, we meet with planning. Then we meet with Invest Southwest, and every project that we have, we have a meeting. And then we're meeting on the uh, Joint Public Safety Academy. You know, if it hadn't been for your leadership, we would not have been looking for Boys and Girls Club there. That wasn't part of the plan. Through your leadership coming in and looking at that land, uh, they feel, the community feel that is one of the best things that we could do there is putting something for the youth. And that's another meeting that we had in trying to draw out um, how it's going to look uh, with the My Shy, My Future group and uh, getting the designs and what they felt. It's just been a lot of work through the pandemic that we've been doing nonstop, and I'm grateful for it. I'm really grateful for that pop-up court, though. Uh, I see it being utilized, and, and if we can continue to work with uh, DCAP, we could bring more artwork, something the community never had, but it's everywhere else, but we don't have it. That's totally neglect, right? So. It's time for us to just uh, bring life to a city 
a whole city and not just the part of it. I have a question about uh, retail. Now, you heard us talk about we used to have um, a planning person just for economic development for retail. You have a, I think we mentioned in our last budget hearing about this planning person right. that we used to have who would help or represented to who helped the Ottomans to bring business to us. Uh, stores wanted to come in. Who is that person in your department? Um, well, I may let uh, Chip Hastings speak because I think this is a great opportunity for uh, okay. us to highlight um, the SPIF program of which uh, this council gave us a three-year um, window to, okay. be able to, to be able to cultivate small businesses. Um, Chip? So I want a grocery store, you know, food for less left out of there. Well, there's also, uh, we're, we're putting together a business development group okay. that can proactively, um, we already have uh, the, the, the positions filled that will allow us to proactively go out and um, look for those type of investments. Uh, Chip, you might talk sure. about both of them. Uh, for the record, Chip Hastings, uh, Bureau you. of Economic Development. Uh, Alderwoman Mitts, always a pleasure. We, we yes, talk sir. probably more often than you would like, but that's <laughs> part, of the, part of the risk. Um, a couple of things. One, the person you're referring to, uh, I don't think we've had somebody in the department that is- Her been name was Fran Spencer. Fran Spen yes. Spencer, yes. yeah. And I bumped into her a few years ago, um, but she was in charge of retail right. contacts. Um, we, you know, part of the, part of the tie-in with the SPIF program, uh, you know, we rolled out a, late last year, we pushed forward with a three-year plan, uh, $60 million, 60 SPIFs over three years. And um, there was some pushback on it, frankly. And so far, we've been very, very fortunate to roll out SPIFs across the city. And their small retail has taken advantage of that. That's one part of the answer to your question, because you have small retail, obviously, that we can help with with SPIF, and then you have larger retail. And the commissioner mentioned a, a new group within the Bureau of Economic Development that will be focused on hitting um, some of that mid-sized development, those mid-sized development projects. We've gotten really good, in my opinion, over the years at doing large developments. Um, we are now focused on small developments through SPIF and NOF. And there's still that missing middle that, that I think the commissioner referenced in his talk, his opening uh, comments. That's what this new group will focus on to a large extent. Um, some of the RFPs that have been issued have developer groups that can focus on those sites. Grocery stores, we have a list of grocers that, uh, frankly, we reach out to whenever there's a vacancy. Um, uh, some of your colleagues have had grocery stores close. We're on the phones calling everyone we know related to those grocery stores. And we now have a small group. It's a small group. It's, I won't refer to it as a pilot program, but a small group of people that can focus on those kind of things in the near term. Um, so I'm happy to more. Yeah, I don't want to take too much of your time. I would love to have some conversation with you because I got to have another question I want to ask. Um, Commissioner, is there anyone that's in your department that can give us by ward, map, demographics, retail, so we could have something when the business people come in, that we can help to promote our own community mm -hmm. along with them. Now, we used to have it. Wars and change. Boundaries changed since then. It's no good. We need an up-to-date one. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could get that, then we could, and as much information from your department is to put in and on that map, then it could help us out so much. And we could help you to help us out. Absolutely. No, um, we are beginning to try to map the economic development uh, by ward so that you can see where clusters of economic activity is happening, where there are areas that uh, you'd like to see more, um, plan development. So absolutely, I think we- If it's a TIF area, those things should be put on, on that map, Na um, neighborhood opportunity funds area so that when we just show it, somebody can appreciate looking at it and know what you're talking about without having to try to put it all together. No, it's a very good point. Uh, those maps can be generated and uh, we can work with your office to make sure it has the kind of information that you can then use to promote uh, your ward. Absolutely. Thank you for the suggestion. 
Well, thank you so much, and thank all of your team. Uh, I, as I said, I have on the phone with them all week long. I think sometimes they have to council meetings because I'm in a meeting, and if they wait for me, I can't be in both meetings. Uh, but it's been very interesting. Started out a little rocky, mm -hmm. uh, of course, but I think that we didn't get past that. Anything that you start, uh, you usually have some hang-ups along the way, and I'm looking for um, our, the road to be much more smoother as we continue to, to go down this road. Well, absolutely, so. and, I, and I, we just we appreciate your patience uh, sure. in working with us, um, but we're starting to see the results of, uh, of your partnership, just so thank you again. You're so welcome. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Alderman Mitz. Um, Commissioner, as, as uh, Chip Hastings was talking about a local business development group in the department, um, I'm just my ears perked up because mm -hmm. I wanted you to maybe opine on what impact you think that would have on uh, local selection opportunities and local small businesses mm. where we depend on organizations that you fund right. to uh, assist us in our wards. Yeah, you know, and I will, I will say um, uh, thank you for that. When, when, I, when I first got here, I, I thought and I still believe that the investment should be in reinforcing some of the community groups that do this work naturally. Um, and so the corridor manager program, where we actually are contracting with uh, local entities to be that liaison, um, was where I thought the, best, the money should be spent, uh, as opposed to just hiring another person in our office. Uh, and that has, you know, uh, they are growing with us, learning how to collaborate with your offices and our office. Um, but I think that it's going to pay back dividends because they're in contact. Um, and again, we're, it's a pilot uh, and we're still seeing how it works. Sometimes it's working better in some wards than others, uh, but that was, uh, that was the decision that we were making there. Um, so it's a pilot, where is this pilot gonna be? Look, I mean, how, how are you selecting the areas in which this? Well, the, the, this is the corridor manager program corridor that manager. LISC has been um, working with us um, to okay, implement. Okay, so those are in the Invest Southwest areas, right? That is true. Okay, all righty, um, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Alderman uh, Moore. Thank you, Chairman, and um, to everyone here, thank you for your presence and your work and um, your support whenever my office um, reach out. Uh, first, let me just start by making uh, this statement, because I do want to make it uh, publicly, is that th this administration, and neither, no person that I know is perfect, but um, whether I always agree or disagree, one thing I like about this administration, and especially this um, leader, uh, uh, the mayor who's running this, is that she's focused on uh, what I call doing a Marshall Plan for the south and west sides of Chicago, something that I um, supported her on before she became mayor and something I believe in. It was something I believed in well before I became alderman. And, and to see that it's happening, it, it's big for Chicago. Um, a couple of days ago, uh, one of our colleagues uh, when talking about the crime, was saying this is probably the worst city in the um, country. I then no. uh, respectfully opposed and said, no, I think it's the best city in the country. Then I think today or yesterday an article comes out about Chicago being uh, ranked the best city again. So I wasn't wrong. Um, and that came, I stated that before um, the article came out because it's important that we rebuild um, Chicago, and, and especially those communities that have been left behind. So I just want to commend um, the mayor, uh, whether we battle on one issue or another, one thing we're going to agree on is that we have to uh, rebuild um, the south and west sides of Chicago. So I commend her and this team for following her leadership on that. But while we do that, we have to make sure um, that we're doing it, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word, the right way. And, and that right way for me um, always begins with making sure that the aldermen who are elected 
are involved in any process from beginning to end. And I cannot stress that um, clearly enough, and I, I think that's where Alderman Tunney was sort of going with some of his questioning. And so respectfully, um, I ask this question. Um, we are in a budget hearing today, correct? Yes. And in this budget hearing um, that we are approving the budget for planning and development, correct? Yes. And within that planning and development budget is your salary, correct? Yes. And who is in here going to pass that budget? <laughs> the alderman. Thank you. Not the community <laughs> organizations, nobody else. So let's be very clear on that and, and, and let's work with that in mind. Um, because trust me, I would not pass a budget and I don't care where it stands on if that type of cooperation going forward is, is not given. So let's, let's be clear on that, okay? And, and that's all I ask from that standpoint. Um, the other part I want to go into, and this is a couple of questions, and it's leading to what, um, so we can get a full understanding, because I sort of know what you all are doing, but sometimes in terms of the environmental study with the vacant lands, but sometimes we have to make sure what we're doing, because I've heard some this saying before, sometimes doing the right thing is not doing the right thing. And when we're talking about this environmental on, the, on these vacant lands, what's the cost of us doing that? What, what's the cost? What are we spending to do that? Um, Kathy, can you answer per sure. lot? Kathy Dickett, uh, Deputy Commissioner, uh, Citywide Planning Bureau. Um, the cost for 10,000 lots, what we're looking at is about 20 million. And just to read it, so that's yep, uh, 10,000 lots for 20 million, which will give us an indication of all the past Review. histories of all these lots. The, because of the way we're doing it, we will also have actually more information of other lots on the block which the city does not own. I got it. Okay. So, and when we find this out, are we then cleaning it before we sell it? That will depend on what the end use is of the, um, of the lot. So, as I said before, we expect many of these lots to be able to be sold as is. They do not all need to be cleaned. What we really are looking for is the ones that are really need to be cleaned, and then for ones where we may be doing certain kinds of projects, what kind of level of um, ex, um, extra testing and cleanup do we need to do? So I hope you see where I'm going with this. That's, that's a price tag. Yes. Um, that's a huge price tag to not be doing anything with, but just knowing. And so what I guess what I want to go back to with what Alderman Thompson was saying, um, if we have things, and I think um, Chairman Dowd asked what's in the, what's you know um, in the backfield right now, if we have lots that uh, people want to buy, and or if developers want to develop, and some are just putting a slab on, <laughs> and that slab I don't care what's under there, uh, and everybody's seen this in their development. It almost doesn't matter if you're just putting a top slab on there um, in some cases. And then if people are just using it for their simple garden, um, mm -hmm. then that's, that's another one. I, I think we have to be careful about $20 million that we're spending for I don't know what percentage of lots that we're not going to even clean or just sell as is. And so, um, uh, I think we need to just have conversations about that. I don't think he's going to, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I've heard every answer as I was sitting here, but I, I just want people to go back. I have to make that statement to say, just go back and please look and reevaluate when you're talking about all of these lots, because that's, that's, yep. that's a hefty price tag. What I would like to, I mean, I, I, think, I thank you for um, your focus on the vacant lots, because we're looking for answers as well. Uh, we don't, uh, the funds, we have broad buckets, um, but there is a significant portion of the money that we're allocating to help those who buy the lots um, have a maintenance strategy for the lots. I, you know. Uh, uh, Nina Edemudi, Assistant Commissioner. So that includes tree planting. You have to pull your mic closer to you, oh, young lady. Yes. I'm sorry. Nina Edemudi, Assistant Commissioner. So as Commissioner Cox is stating, yes, so the first por portion, that $20 million, is going to do that historic environmental analysis. But there's also money to, once we see the lots that need beautification, to actually also fund that too, right? Because 
you know, if there's swaths of open land that are not being taken care of, so there's also going to be resources towards fencing, towards planting trees where there's no tree coverage. So it's not necessarily just stopping at the environmental analysis. There's also like that a beautification. And then also um, to multiple aldermen's points earlier, money towards staffing to sell those lots. Because right now we, we do not have the capacity to sell those lots at the rate we, that we would uh -huh. like to. To Res re Respectfully, to I, I get all of that. And I, I don't want to spend this time going to debate. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that's still that $20 million or whatever, that number is still gone. Mm -hmm. Even if you have provide other resources. We, I just need really look at and evaluate. Sure. That's all. That's all I'm saying. The other thing comes to this, and this is my uh, um, thing, and it goes back to the years that where there was in the daily administration or whatever. Um, can you get through the chair? How many new grocery stores have opened up in a city, and where? Hmm. And, and and for the record, where I'm going with this is that I need this administration, both the fifth floor and this department to really, number one, in our communities, it's, it's, it's a tough thing to beg people to want to come to your community. Mm -hmm. And especially when we don't have people who can operate a grocery store. As you, you and I both know, we have people that want to build one, but everybody don't want to operate. So we have to think about, and I don't, and I, I don't, and I'm sure this can fall under de development, how do we then put some type of program together to get people into operating, mm -hmm. whether it's a grocery store or anything else? Because whether I go back to um, the, the um, daily years when we've asked um, Red Lobster to come here to the city, and they said, we didn't come, and they're going to come to us at 95th Street anyway. And, <laughs> and guess what? They didn't come. Um, or when Walgreens wanted to come to Arp and Gresham and they didn't want to come and, and, and I remember the mayor saying, well, yeah, I, I, well you, you're going to want this permit or zoning up downtown, so I hope it goes through, mm -hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden one pops up in Arp and Gresham. He, the Walgreens truly knew what that meant. Um, we have to make sure those same things and some same pushes are happening and not just letting people go, but if also they don't want to come, we have to create the opportunity yes. for, as we do with NOF for businesses, but also for operators. So I just want to put that on the mind and on the mm -hmm. plate so that we can mm -hmm. have um, some operators. Nina, Nina Iremuria, Assistant Commissioner, so glad that you brought this up because this is this is something that we've heard in the community. This is something that we've heard from the aldermen. Actually, in the ARP funding and in the bond funding, we've set aside money um, to help communities that can't uh, can't attract those types of grocery stores or neighborhood amenities without government subsidies. And so there's allocation here to help get those projects off the ground, specifically in those communities that can that cannot get those operators. Um, so it's something again that we hope to build out with you in the community. As, as we go forward, but there is allocation here for a program of that type. I'll talk to you offline about that because I really want to see what that looks like. I'm okay. hearing it, but I, I just can't see it right now. So you and I right. talk offline. I'll go to a round two. I think I got one or two more questions, Chairman. Thank you. I haven't really been doing round twos today, Alderman. Moore, well, let me so get let me get this get last one next in. Question in. All right. So this last one, and this goes around 69th Street between Ashland and Damon, mm. and um, um, Chip, no, this was a big thing of mine when, in, in the last administration when they closed that TIF. Are we looking at opening in, any more TIFs? Because that's 69th Street in which we own probably 60% of that vacant land. <laughs> um, and, and I'm seeing a push from west, uh, over from the west to east, mm. and, and a growth of population over there. Uh, influx of a grocery store that's overcrowded, but we got an opportunity over there to build. I have people looking over there, but I don't have any dollars to help them. All right. Um, Chip, uh, the 69th, he's talking about a TIF boundary for the 69th. No, it used to, right. So we ha can we create another, because you know the other one is closed. Uh, Ch uh, Chip Hastings, um, Bureau of Economic Development, uh, 69th and Ashland, right? Damon. Ashland to Damon. Is that the shopping center where the Where the shopping store? center used to be the TIF, right. but that strip from 69th and Ashland where, where all the vacant land is, which is about, and you get, because you guys gave right, me the right, map, right. which is mostly city-owned vacant land. Kmart, former Sears near there, correct? 
No. No. Okay. I'm thinking no. of the other one. Okay. Because we had two shopping centers. The one you're referring to, I think the TIF expired a few years ago. Right. Um, you know, if there's a development opportunity, we're happy to chase it down. We're happy to have a comprehensive discussion about how we can help, whether that's TIF, whether that's new market tax credits, whatever it is, it's all on the table. So if, if, there's, a, if there's a site or a facility that we have an opportunity to, en to engage a grocery store and a larger development, everything's on the table. Okay. All right. Thank you. And we can follow up on that conversation. I'd like to know more. Thank you all. Thank, thank you all, Lemon Moore. There's been a lot of movement in and out of the council. So um, uh, the order that I have here is Alderman Beal, Alderman Beal, Alderman Smith, um, Alderman Irvin, Alderman King, and Alderman Vasquez, and Cardona. Alderman Beal. Thank you. Madam Chairman, Rule 41 says if you mention my name twice, I get 20 minutes. <laughs> so you said Bill and then Bill again. So. That was a <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Commissioner, I've listened to, I've actually listened to the entire hearing. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's actually kind of amazing to me that, um, you know, you're pretty much having a honeymoon kind of a hearing, but when I talk to people, they got a lot of complaints, but they're not complaining today. Hmm. I wonder why. I wonder why. Quick, first question I have for you, Commissioner. I want you to explain to me an email that you sent to the Plan Commission the day before we had our hearing. Hmm. And it reads, looking forward to our meeting on today, 1 p.m., where DPD will be presenting the next opportunity of site development in the Invest Southwest initiative. I want to bring to your attention a situation that ha has emerged around the South Michigan opportunity in Roseland. There's a very strong likelihood that the alderman of the ward, Beal, will be speaking against the release of the RFP for Roseland. I don't pretend to understand his motivation for opposing the release of the RFP but I do know that over the course of a year, he has generally shown a lack of interest in revitalization in the commercial corridor through new infield development and adaptive reuse. You remember that letter? Uh, I do. Okay. Could you explain to me that all the development that I've had over the past 10 years, I've brought over a billion dollars of investment and used to tell the commissioners that I have a lack of interest in developing my ward. Um, again, thank you for um, bringing up the, the, the opportunity site. You know, the planning department has been working with members of your staff, uh, members of the round table hearings to find opportunities specifically on South Michigan. Uh, which is that six block area that has the highest concentration of small business um, uh, businesses clustered there. And so we very specifically wanted to resuscitate and revitalize that corridor. Now, I know that that has not been the center of uh, most of your economic activity, but with the red line extension coming uh, to the southern end, uh, anchoring the, uh, at two points, we felt this was a place that we could um, who is successfully. We? Who is we? Well, the roundtable conversations we've been having with 12, 12, for 12 months have been with community organizations, with business owners, uh, and so that was a priority, um, and we were ready to release the RFP. Uh, we still are ready to release the RFP. Um, but we did not have your support. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I have to say, it's the only um, release of an RFP that has been um, objected to by an alderman. Well, I think you've had more RFPs that are objected to, but we were just the ones successful in holding, Stopping it, them. And holding it up. That's all it is. Well, I still think that it's an, it's an opportunity. Uh, we stand ready mm -hmm. to, to work with you to, mm -hmm. to release that RFP. It's written. Uh, and as I said, in, in all of the RFPs that we've released, um, development teams have stepped forward and those projects are moving forward. Okay. Now, Commissioner, you stated that, you know, my staff has been on several meetings, probably majority of them. 
if my staff is on the meeting, that's me. Mm -hmm. And if for you to say that I have a lack of interest in development in my ward is a total mischaracterization of me and my office. Well, I accept that. I mean, I accept that. I, I was referring specifically to South Michigan, um, which again is a street that we think is worth preserving. Um, and we've had conversations uh, where but, but you and I don't I have see that corridor the I same way. I was the alderman that put the TIF in place, the redevelopment plan in place, the acquisition map in place. That was all my administration, mm -hmm. okay? So that's not lack of attention, okay? Right now, the opportunities that I've had available to the Ninth Ward was the fact that we were able to amass a large parcel of land mm -hmm. off the expressway, and we, it was a great opportunity, and that development is taking off more than major, anybody can ever success. imagine. A major success. Absolutely. It's very, very Absolutely. different than South Michigan, which is smaller, multi-property -prop, uh, owners. It's a different kind of development, and I, I completely uh, kudos to the success you've had in creating the Pullman uh, District. Saving a struggling commercial corridor is a, is a different assignment, uh, and I feel no, I very well equipped to assist in helping to revitalize that one. And that's why I've, you know, when we've had our first meeting, uh, you know, I told you that 115th Street was the priority mm -hmm. for Michigan Avenue. But your RFP didn't even address 115th Street. Your RFP that you and your staff put together totally ignored the community's wishes along with mine. And that is why every community group that you had initially signed on to the RFP, once they found out that Huntington was not the priority, withdrew their support for the RFP. So right now, you don't have any support for the Michigan Avenue RFP because every community group has withdrew mm -hmm. their support for that RFP. That's a problem. Well, it is a problem, and I think it's a problem of sequencing. Uh, I, I believe 115th Street is an absolute priority, but it's very much tied to the red line extension. It's I disagree with you. It, can, it can, please, Pat, please don't. don't. Can you, like, I, make... I got move it. To bat, move to some budget questions, Alderman. This Bill. is budget question. This is, this is his hearing before us to talk about development and what his department is trying to bring forward to my ward. And my point is this commissioner, along with some of his staff, not all, because some of those people in the box are great people, but there's also some that are following his lead and not listening to us in the community. That's a problem. I'll let you go for the, your three, two minutes and 50 that's all, seconds. That's all I ask. All right, go. All right. So, Commissioner, your life will be a lot easier if you listen to the alderman and the community instead of trying to circumvent the community because after, after that hearing when that RFP was held up, mm. your staff called each and every one of those people that withdrew and threatened them. No, that's simply, that's I, simply not true. Well, they expressed the, the, those community folks who were anxious to see this move forward. They had worked on it for 12 months. Uh, we're disappointed, and we had to explain to them why we could not move forward, uh, that we needed the alderman's support. Uh, and I'm still looking for your support. Uh, you will have my support. As soon as 115th Street is the priority for your department, for my community, you will have my overwhelming support moving that RFP forward. So if you want to rewrite it, redirect it, however the case may be, 115th Street, once it's added, you will have my full support going forward. Okay? Those other two... So, you know, just so, you know, but before the election, you all can say we did something in this corridor. I'm not concerned about that. That's not my issue. That's not my, my motivation. My motivation is to do something substantive for my community. That's all I've been doing my entire career is trying to do the best for my community. And when I have people coming in trying to go against the wishes of my community, that's not going to work. Because when you're gone and the next commissioner's sitting there, and they start over, we don't start over. We continue moving forward. So that's why it's important to listen to us. 
Well, I, I definitely um, agree uh, that I'm trying to find a middle ground, trying to find something that will um, change the course of a commercial corridor that I believe needs to be revitalized. Uh, it may be, it may not be the first priority. Uh, it is a priority, and it may be the first thing that we can have success on to show others um, to come along, and we're seeing that happen. Uh, buildings on that corridor are, are literally falling down. They are mm -hmm. falling down. Mm -hmm. So it is an emergency uh, from our perspective if we want to hold on to that so that the medical district can actually go to uh, a commercial main street. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll work with you. Uh, I'm you know, determined to find an opportunity to assist uh, okay. residents. How much money are you guys spending on those ugly lots that you all are fencing in with those country style fences they're putting up? Well, that, that's uh, an initiative led by the mayor's office uh, to spruce up those lots, and I think they have made a difference. Those are the ugliest fencing. It looks like it's something out of the country, and it's not something mm -hmm. that we asked for. It was not something that was brought to the community for the community to have input on. It was done, you know, with, again, outside the objection. Those are the ugliest lots ever. Thank you, Alderman Beale. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderman Smith. Commissioner, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank good you very you. much. It's good to see you and your very helpful staff. I, I wanted to ask a couple general questions um, that I hope won't take too long to answer. Yeah. But So we've just been through this terrible year of COVID. And in, in your professional opinion, what does the latest, does this last period of COVID tell us about how we should be shaping development going forward for hmm. the people? Well, that's, a, that's a great question, and I, I appreciate um, some of the lessons that we've learned is how important our neighborhoods and their resiliency are, um, so that smaller grain, small business development, that when people weren't able to do shopping using public transit and they had to walk to it, it really required that our small businesses are resilient. So I actually think that it accelerated the, the focus that we've put on uh, neighborhoods. Um, and the other uh, clearly is that there is a connection between the downtown vibrancy and the importance of continuing to um, accelerate the economic recovery of downtown because that allows us to have the resources we need to go into uh, neighborhoods. So those are just two lessons I think I've learned. Okay, uh, I'll add a third, which is open space. Yes. Which is how much people value open space. But I, di I did want to talk about downtown. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the 7-Eleven across the street closed from City Hall, and we all depended on that 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. And it's just an example of, on, you know, of, of, on a personal level of what's happened to downtown. So what do you think, what, what are you doing and what more do you think needs to be done in order to bring back downtown as much as possible? No, I appreciate it. And you know, we um, engaged the, in the recovery, downtown recovery plan that uh, Cindy Rubeck helped mm -hmm. lead. So I'm gonna let you um, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the recommendations that we can expect from that. Thank you. Uh, Cindy Rubick, Assistant Commissioner. I lead the Central Planning Region for the Department of Planning and Development. Thank you, Alderman Smith. I think your question is very timely. It is definitely a concern of ours, all of the vacant retail we're seeing uh, in downtown. Um, and, and really, the strategy is, is uh, multiple, uh, multiple attacking in multiple ways. And when we did the six-month engagement for the Central City Recovery Roadmap, um, you know, we, we, it was really not just gathering city and departments and agencies, but also bringing together the community organizations, the resident organizations, the chambers, and also, you know, the larger companies. Um, and, and together we came up with uh, 90 action items and, and really looked at doing short-term activations. So you saw this, uh, the State Street um, Sundays on State uh, that has been something that has been very successful. Uh, on State Street and actually saw a, a tremendous increase in pedestrian activity during those events and um, to the levels almost uh, pre-pandemic. Um, and then we're seeing also more um, 
downtown rental residency uh, also increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, really, it's up to 94.5% in the second quarter of this year. This is phenomenal uh, improvement over the past uh, pandemic. And then we're seeing also office occupancy in Chicago. It's, it's not where we'd like it to be. It's at 47%. I think that's related to the Delta variant, of course. Um, but it is higher than other cities like Manhattan. Um, and likely, this, this is data from July. So I think, uh, you know, we're going to continue to monitor it. But I think with September and October, we'll see an uptick in more and more people coming downtown. And, and you can kind of see it as, as we use the L coming to work every day. Uh, mm -hmm. There's definitely more people and activity. Uh, people taking transit, which is great. We did see a bump in hotel occupancy um, mm -hmm. this summer as well. So I think we're on the trajectory of, of, of Im improving and recovery for the downtown. Uh, we absolutely, so the short-term activation is important. We did the meet me on the mile, uh, lunch on LaSalle, but then we're also doing some corridor planning along the Meg Mile um, and along LaSalle Street and State Street, of course, with our partners at the Meg Mile Association, um, the Chicago Loop Alliance, and we're working together with alder the impacted aldermen uh, of those wards. So I think you'll, you'll see, you know, you've seen progress already, mm -hmm. and I think we're continuing to work on this issue. So I really, I really appreciate that, Commissioner, because, of course, we have billions of dollars in infrastructure that's already invested, particularly for transit downtown, and yeah. that would be wasting money not to get it to capacity. So my, my question about this is about how much are you thinking about the boundaries of downtown? And I say that as, because I'm very concerned as the alderman of, on, of a war that is pretty immediately adjacent to areas that are considered downtown. Because uh, one of the reasons people move to my community is to be able to enjoy a convenient neighborhood and not to, as is commonly said, live in Streeterville. If they want, if the common refrain in my community is, if I wanted to live in Streeterville, which is fine, I would, but I want to live in a more neighborhood community. And I have been concerned that because it's an easy area to develop, and I'm just going to put it easy for developers because it's attractive financially, uh, people are always coming to us to add density to an area that density was discouraged 30 years ago, which led, ironically, the discouragement of density, in a way, helped the population increase at that time. And so, um, you know, Lincoln Park's population fell in the 50s because people were fleeing to the suburbs and other reasons, and it has gradually, mm -hmm. and actually not so gradually, increased year by year by year. So now I think I'm the ward with the fourth largest growth in the city, I think, fourth largest growth. And that was very deliberate. We tried to replace the law. We very deliberately look at the US Census every year to say, OK, what's our housing stock? What's this? And we did do the work of making up for our loss in two and three flats to put in small apartment buildings to try to replace mm -hmm. population loss. And, to try, and, and we've succeeded beyond really what our goals were. And we're very concerned that this idea that every corner can be a high rise is, is, seems to be very prevalent in the department. And I'm just very concerned that rather than putting resources to revitalizing downtown over the next few years, by continuing the encouragement of residential development there, so you always have a full-time population, is really working, working at cross purposes when you're ex essentially extending downtown far past North Avenue. So I wonder if you have any comment on that. Well, no, I, I appreciate um, your, your concerns. I will say part of what we've been trying to do is to direct development in other parts of the city that have not historically benefited from it. Uh, so that doesn't mean that developers or the market won't look at your, your ward as an attractive place to live, because it is, mm -hmm. um, but the opportunities are not plentiful in your ward. They are plentiful to the south and to the west of the city. So that's where most of our attention is, and you know, we know that totally uh, right. <laughs> Alderman um, King saw one of the largest mm -hmm. uh, planned developments uh, 
in the South Side history in her ward. Uh, so that's where we're pushing to develop. And in uh, Alderman Dowell's ward, these are the places where we think the city naturally wants to grow that are adjacent to downtown. And that will relieve pressure from um, wards like yours to the north. Well, we c completely support that because it's, it's very tempting for developers because they can make a much quicker buck. And the land, even, and because the land acquisition costs are high, it forces them to want to build huge and then walk away while the community actually becomes uh, too dense to support mm -hmm. the services that are there. Uh, and so I just want to uh, repeat that because as it is right now, uh, Lincoln Park, which is really huge, people think it's a really huge place. It's the third most visited open space in the United States of America after the Washington Mall and Central Park. Hmm. It's, that's statistically, <laughs> that's the Trust for Public Lands numbers. Uh, we, uh, people are trying to have open space for their families and there's very little, it's overrun. Whereas you have these magnificent parks and parkways all over the city, Washington Park, for example, mm -hmm. places that were built to hold population that aren't. And I applaud this administration's efforts to repopulate these areas that have beautiful old housing stock mm -hmm. and trying to bring affordable housing in these areas to enjoy the community. And that's really all I have to say. No, and thank you. And thank you. You do, a, you do a wonderful job in lifting up the preservation of your existing community. So uh, I've appreciated working with you and your uh, your willingness to share some of this growth opportunity with your colleagues on the west and south side. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Smith. Alderman Irvin, followed by Alderman King. Thank you, Ma thank you Madam Chairman. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, just a uh, couple of questions um, on the budget. Um, see that you are increasing your staffing in uh, legislative affairs and special projects. Uh, what specifically will that uh, bring to us? Let me uh, get the the positions. Do you are you able to find uh, tab? Yes. Um, Matt, are you able? Uh, yes. Uh, for the record, for the record, this is Matt Schmitz, Deputy Commissioner of Finance. So those uh, Alderman, those positions were actually just moved from a different section. Uh, so those positions came from. Section 4002, which was the administrative services section. So that you had one come from there. I saw that you moved your first deputy into planning. Um, okay, because mm -hmm. your overall head county is up. Uh, just so just trying to get some some clarity and then the same thing with planning and design I guess there was a net increase of two assistant commissioners there when you back out the uh, first deputy and one other spate one other uh, Spot that came out of uh, it looks like 4,000. So uh, I mean just just trying to get some clarity as to mm -hmm. The moves and, and what you anticipate this right. to bring to us Well, I think the the movement to the first deputy uh, commissioner to the new funding source is really just to get alignment uh, on the actual uh, job that he's doing. I don't think it's anything more than that, um, Matt. Correct. Matt Smith, Deputy uh, Finance. So uh, yeah, every, every year our department kind of goes through an operational analysis to see where staffing is most needed and kind of the roles people are playing. Uh, and then we kind of, you know, put people where we think they're, you know, best serving the functions of the department. So in your increased headcount, what, what it then, in, in your opinion, is the true e increase in headcount and what does that bring to us? Nina Iremudia, Assistant Commissioner. So um, we are up two positions in zoning to handle kind of our caseload to make sure we can get our permitting out. Um, we are up two positions in planning and design. Uh, as the commissioner noted earlier, we are short staffed on the northwest side, so we are trying to hire new planners to accommodate that. We are up two IT positions, as we've seen with the pandemic. We have a, a lot heavier load when it comes to our uh, tech needs, especially since we share our operations with the Department of Housing. 
um, and then we are up two positions in our economic development. So we, as Commissioner Cox uh, talked about earlier, you know, we're, we're trying to be uh, more proactive in our economic development and hiring a few positions there. Um, and then we had one uh, position, a director of finance that was actually added mid-year of 2021. Okay. So those are the new positions. Man, that, was, that wasn't that hard, was it? No, it wasn't. All right, <laughs> thank y'all. Um, a couple other operational issues. Uh, number one is the foreclosure of vacant lots. Um, we as a city seem to be, I would call us de facto owners of lots of, of lots. Um, and we have not foreclosed on the demolition liens, the, the get grass cutting liens, the picking up the fly dump liens. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're ultimately maintaining these properties, then why not take the resources part of uh, ARP and just do a massive um, collection and bring these properties into our inventory uh, as, as city assets since we are managing them. And the other part of it is that because it's not city property, there's certain things that we cannot do. We can't fence them in. Uh, the owners have abandoned them. So what are your thoughts on essentially doing a massive uh, review and looking at and foreclosing and taking these properties into our inventory? Um, thank you. Thank you for the question. And we really have been um, wrestling with how to address this. And I've asked uh, for our general counsel could um, elaborate a little bit on um, our options there. Uh, that would be mine. Uh, for the record, uh, Michael Gaynor, uh, Deputy Commissioner. Um, you, you're right, Alderman. There's a, um, uh, and as the commissioner was saying too, there's a bit of a tension or a, ba you know, a balance to be struck there. Um, foreclosing on all those liens would require, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a large investment of time and money you know, in, in legal expenses. Um, and then of course, we don't necessarily want to take, not knowing the environmental condition of all these properties, we don't necessarily want to take them on uh, en masse, but uh, you're right, that would be a strategy worth looking at. But you know, there's some balancing, some concerns to be balanced there. I mean, especially in communities that we're seeing that are changing, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at a community like East Garfield Park, where we, you know, between uh, the land bank and the city, uh, we own about 30% of the vacant land. And if right. we start looking at the other vacant land and seeing that we may have a lien on that land, then we may as well take it, especially in areas that by the investment that we've made in demolition may and the investment to foreclose, may in fact be worth it when, we start, when we're starting to talk about affordability and sustaining uh, you know, affordable units in these communities. So I think it's something that, especially in communities that are you know, subject to gentrification that we really need to look at as a strategy to managing those uh, particular parcels because it may work to our advantage to do mm -hmm. that. So um, second is the uh, TIF extensions. Uh, we have a large number of TIFs that are reaching that the maturation stage and I'm not sure uh, where we are with uh, that process between here and legislatively in Springfield and, and then just a couple on the west side that we yep. need to look at the potential of extending and or expansion in certain cases, cases or even um, you know decreasing them if, if their uh, development goals have been uh, objectives ha have been met. So uh, let's just make sure we keep that on our, uh, on mm -hmm. our radar. Uh, as far as the Cook County Land Bank, um, it, it seems as if, in my understanding, and I know that you guys aren't there, but I believe you sit on the board of the Land Bank. Uh, I do. Um, that um, sometimes the, the projects in the past, they would look to us to sign off on uh, various acquisitions that they were making, and now it's seeming like that policy uh, is changing. And my question is, what are they looking at other than just putting properties back on the tax rolls? Because that can be done at the expense of a lot of things, primarily affordability and the community's desires and seeing um, certain types of activities to occur uh, in, the, in the community. So I think that um, without that kind of consultation and, you know, just outright just you know, dumping property just for the sake of dumping it, it could create uh, hardships on communities and, and things that, that don't exist. And I think that as a, a voice at the, at, the, at the table, then, you know, we should be a a actively advocating for 
uh, what the needs of the communities are. So I'm just trying to trying to get some clarity from you as to sure. what your position is on, on those particular matters. Uh, that's a, an, an excellent point, and you are right. I, I sit on the land bank board, and uh, more recently, I am uh, on the acquisition um, and uh, and sale of properties. So at this point, every property that happens, I am able to um, monitor uh, and to coordinate it with uh, efforts that we're uh, doing in the planning department. Uh, and of course, the, the new executive director is Eleanor Gorski, who was the former first deputy commissioner here. So the level of coordination, I think, will be unprecedented. Uh, and the level of communication with your offices about sales uh, will be unprecedented. Uh, again, this is new. I'm specifically asked to be on the acquisition uh, and uh, sale uh, committee so that I can um, better coordinate with, with uh, the city wards that, that are impacted by this. Okay. Go ahead. Point of, point of information. Uh, mm -hmm. Do aldermen still sign off on that form? Yes or no? That I, I would have to get back uh, to you about whether you sign off. I know we are notified. We have signed off in the past. There's a piece of paper, a form that mm -hmm. comes to us. Okay. And I haven't seen one of those in about a year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to, through the chair, uh, clarify that, that process. And then through the chair, can you also clarify what parcels, if that policy is not in place anymore, what parcels have been sold mm -hmm. or provide or given to developers uh, by ward? Um, happy to share that information. Thank you, Alderman. Urban. I think you, you were reading my mind, and I didn't even have to use my time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the final point, uh, open space funds. Uh, I, 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 for whatever reason, um, we've had a project in East Garfield Park um, at Fifth Avenue in Sacramento that just seems to be stuck in neutral um, and has been uh, for a while. And uh, residents have uh, expressed concern over the, it was a, a fruit orchard project and there's a very limited window on when you can plant fruit trees. And we're in it now, and we, for whatever reason, can't seem to get all of the oars in a row to make that happen on a time. Do you have the basis. parcel information for that one? That said, uh, again, Sacramento and Fifth Avenue, uh, okay. southwest corner, if I'm not mistaken. This is a project between Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Uh, we use some open space impact fees, and I mm -hmm. believe that it was on city property. Uh, through the Garfield Park uh, Garden uh, Garden Network. My final comment, Invest Southwest, you know, I, I was not a, a fan of Garfield Park East or West not being included um, in an Invest Southwest program. However, uh, we have been doing things in, in the area, mm -hmm. but I do think that uh, we need the Department of Planning to step up in a major way, uh, primarily in West Garfield Park. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, that's the area where government needs to be stepping in. I know there's low-hanging fruit out there, but the real work that we have to do is where we have to spur and, and kickstart some things jumping off. And West Garfield is a great place for us to do that. A lot of communities on the west side are kind of moving. They're kind of taking care of themselves, but we really need your help in West Garfield Park. No, I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to working with you now on uh, West Garfield Park. I think we have a, a framework for how to do this that will attract uh, private investment. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alderman uh, Irvin. Alderman King, followed by Alderman Vasquez. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Good, good evening, Commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> How are you? Good. Uh, you. First of all, just yeah, thank you uh, to you and your team. I know you guys work hard at what you're doing. I've, uh, I think, had the privilege of taking up a lot of your time and your team's time. Um, uh, you know, don't want to send a lot of shout outs. I might uh, forget some folks, but Patrick Murphy and Cindy Rubick, you know, I had them on speed dial at one point. So, and they did, you know, a great job of working with me. Um, and I think under difficult circumstances. I do, however, feel 
that there are some things, um, there's room for improvement, mm -hmm. let's just say. Um, and I'd like to talk about that through the budget because I wanna, add, I wanna understand you know, if there are dollars put to some of the issues that I saw um, and try and reflect on those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you just mentioned, we you know, had a huge project in the ward, uh, Brownsville Lakefront, former Michael Reese uh, development. And through the RDA process and the PD process, I felt your team was overwhelmed by that process. I was overwhelmed by that process. But I felt I was overwhelmed because I was making up, honestly, for the team's lack of understanding of what the community wanted and not, not necessarily what they wanted, but how it was codified. Um, and so I want to ask, so how many lawyers are actually in the department? Well, in, in the department specifically, I mean, um Mike, uh, Mike, who's our general counsel, can assist. That's just a number. The, the, I'm, I'm the general counsel for You're both. You're it. Uh, yes. OK, in the department. Um, and I, so you know, and I, I express this to you, but you know, I felt the development teams were writing the plan development, the RDA and that the teams were trying to catch up to them. So I'm wondering, are, are there line items for more legal help in, in your department? I mean, we, we, we often can uh, ask for um, additional uh, legal support for special projects. Uh, we didn't do that in this particular case because we have managed uh, PDs um, for some of the larger sites in the past. Um, well, I think that would be helpful. I think it's... You know, I don't think developers should be writing PDs or RDAs. Um, I think it does the process a disservice if, you know, the community and the development team and the city have agreed upon, um, you know, certain benefits and then it's not codified or mm -hmm. then the developer has written his way out of kind of those promises. And, and so I, I, you know, came across that more times than once, and I and that's something I'd love to see, uh, you know, beefed up legal team. I mm -hmm. think on a number of issues, um, it would be prudent to make sure that the things that are promised in the communities are are actually in in the um, uh, agreements. Mm -hmm. So that you know, that's that's one um, issue. Um, also, in terms of your land sales. How many folks in your office work on that, and are you increasing increasing that? Um, Kathy, would you like to say where we are right now and our aspirations, at least? <laughs> Alderman King, Kathy Dick, um, Deputy Commissioner of Citywide Planning. So we have um, we have five in the Land Resources Team, which is headed by Nelson, but there are also um, staff in the different in some of the different. Um, regions that do real estate, so for West and Far South and um, a couple others. But yes, we do need to um, staff that up. I, so is that in the budget, to staff that up? Um, uh, we, we, yeah, we, 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 we have aspirational goals, as the commissioner said, to staff that up. We did put some in the budget, and we are looking at, through the Chicago Recovery Plan, different ways to augment services with um, consultants. Okay, so how many have you increased it by? I'm sorry, what? Well, we haven't. We haven't. We, we have haven't, not. But as I said, um, okay. we certainly have, uh, you know, um, pointed, pointed out the need to the, the budget office. And okay. so we remain hopeful. That's something <laughs> I would love, love to add. Um, so I, I, I will, and I know the, uh, the chair is taking note of that. So yeah, uh, I, can I, excuse sure. me, you can get your time back while mm -hmm. Alderman mm -hmm. King. I just want to know if you had your if you could wave a wand, are we talking about uh, another mm -hmm. junior staff person, no, two think, junior staff people? I think a senior, a senior uh, land analyst would be ideal. One senior planning analyst that is specific. What we were looking at, if you're asking yeah. that, is four. So one senior um, um, uh, land specialist, but also three market rate sales 
people. So, I mean, we have staff that have been very good and, they're, and they have managed the dollar lot programs and we talked about why that is slowed up, but the market rate sales, we need more professionals there. And how many uh, land sales could you get out the door hmm. if you had that? Well, I'm going to preface that with dealing with the environmental stuff, which we need to do, which is yeah, unblocks assuming it. that was not an issue. Um, I, I, I have to, I'd have to do some analysis and get you that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Alderman King. Thank you. Um, and then the pilot that you're doing mm -hmm. on uh, community uh, wealth building pilot, yes. 15 million. Um, will that include some of the conversation that we discussed early on? Um, so money can be used for communities to, in a sense, build themselves, not take the equity out mm -hmm. like a lot of developers do. Um, you know, so that's what that intention is. Uh, can yeah, be I mean, for there are a variety of models uh, that include some of the ones you've just described. Uh, Nina, do you? Yeah. Nina Irimudia, Assistant Commissioner. So yes, right now as we have the program light, laid out, there are several um, different buckets uh, for the community wealth building pilots. Um, one to look at worker cooperatives, community investment vehicles, um, lim limited equity housing cooperatives. So spending money to have more models like that across the city. We already have some examples like Shy Fresh Kitchen or Chicago Trend or so let me, housing cooperatives. Because my mm -hmm. time is limited, let me mm -hmm. specifically ask, okay. like. Can um, a non can can you, for instance, give say a million dollars to a nonprofit who wants to develop um, either commercial or residential space um, that they would then you know sell at at cost um, to the community or something like that? Uh, that is an aspect of the program. Yes, okay. a, a possibility. Okay, I just just want to mm -hmm. um, clarify that. Um, it, a couple of things through the chair. One, I, I know I heard earlier about people asking about um, how many properties sold by ward. I just want to mm -hmm. make sure. And then how long it, it takes the average time to get those sold. Um, also, all projects. So the projects that are under your purview, mm -hmm. are they only TIF projects from your um, uh, procurement standpoint, or are they development even outside of TIF? I'm not sure I understand the distinction you're making. Do you know, TIF? So, well, here, let me just ask this question. So, all I, I would like to understand all the projects that were approved, not mm -hmm. just finished, but approved by your office. Right. The development team makeup meaning percentage of ownership of the development team. But I also want to separately know all the TIF projects approved by your um, department um, and the recipients and demographics of hmm. them as well. Are they one and the same or separate? Well, I mean, just in thinking about the, the number of TIF-related projects, that's uh that's a lot of projects. I'm not sure that that can be had by, by Friday, which is the deadline uh, for getting things through the chair. Well, I, I think it would be good information. If, you know, you do your best, but I think it's good information for us, you know, ongoing. So if you can't do it by Friday, I'd still like to understand that because mm -hmm. I know, I know that equity is a big piece of what you know uh, the mayor is talking about, what you're talking about. But I want to honestly see how that money is spent, where it's going, mm -hmm. follow the money. I'm, I'm trying to follow the money to understand who is actually getting the projects and who, you know, is benefiting from it. And so mm -hmm. I'd like to understand that. I don't think that's, it's a hard, you, you know who, who is, the disclosure form says, you know, who owns it and, and then you'll be able to do that. Um, so I appreciate you trying. Mm -hmm. um, and then the consultants uh, that you use, mm -hmm. Um, and the demographics of each. I'd like to understand the paid plus the non, because I know you've got a lot of people who volunteer. Mm -hmm. But of the people who volunteer, I want to understand what other projects they work on that they get paid on in the city, um, just to try and understand that. Um, and I think that may be it for me, Chairman. But just let me look over my notes really quickly. Mm -hmm.
Oh, in terms of your contracts, uh, mm -hmm. and I think Alderman Harrison may have asked, um, but I see that the number of a percentage of African Americans has gone down in terms of contracts. I know we talked about this when you first came um, from year 19 to 20, and I know you haven't gotten all of 21. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to understand that, you know, um, but specifically, um, your the procurement contracts went down by more than half between 19 and 20. What was the big, um, what was the difference? So. Uh, hmm. I see that. Hold on, I can bring that up. Uh, uh, Matt, if you could prepare to answer that. Uh, yes, yeah, so Matt Schmitz, Deputy Commissioner of Finance. Okay. So um, we actually separated out um, before when housing and DPD were combined, we right. were reporting all the numbers together. So as of 2020, we separated out the housing numbers uh, into their department. That's why you see the decline. Okay, so it was $580 million in 19. Now it's $179 million. So you're saying that the difference is in housing. Correct. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, and then now this year, we're on, you're on track to, you're at 25 million and it's half the year. So you're going from 179 or you just haven't reported or what's the difference between mm -hmm. what's happening in 2021 versus 20? Um, I believe that part of that is just the general slowdown in development that we're seeing uh, that's affecting revenues into a the AHOF and NAWF funds, uh, and then also you're seeing a reflect of the numbers here because these numbers reflect money that was paid out to developments, uh, and there's been a general slowdown uh, because of COVID over the last year with that. Right. And Chairman, just for clarification, were all the contracts asked for earlier um, and broken down by um, the recipients of, of those um, and demographic. I that recall, the I know that Alderman Hairston always asked yes. for the 140 account and the breakdown of that, so, of so those if contracts not, if, demographically. If she didn't, can we just provide that through the chair and the breakdown? Who, who the recipients are in the breakdown. And thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alderman King. Alderman Vasquez followed by Alderman Coleman. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll say that it's a joy to wait to be able to uh, be here at the hearing for DPD. Um, your team and what you have done really, to me, exemplifies both the creative and the professional when it comes to development. Uh, I'll say as somebody who, you know, a rookie coming in to be able to meet with the team weekly to kind of plan out all the different things we've been working on, the Ainsley Arch Plaza, Lincoln Avenue North, the $16 million streetscape, the Western Ave Corridor study, Catalpa East, to be able to move all those things on a regular basis and have these conversations to really create the kind of vibrancy in an area that one would want to see. Um, I can't thank you all enough for really being able to work that often uh, to get those things moving. I, I know that for Ainsley Arch Plaza in specific, when that thing was moving forward, I had colleagues who were like, wait, how long were you working on this thing? Because we've worked on some of this stuff for years and not been able to accomplish it. And that is in no small part, it's in large part by what you and your team do. So I wanted to thank you immensely for that. I wanted to make sure to shout out Michael Berkshire, Paul Reese, Catherine Hurd, Patrick Murphy, Chip Hastings, Mark Roshan. Every single time we've had interactions, it's been amazing it's been productive so i want to thank you for that mm -hmm. and now that i've done all of that uh, praise i have just a short uh, list of questions mm -hmm. so um i know that part of when when we had conversations uh, part of what dpd was looking to do is kind of market opportunity properties or areas that weren't necessarily city owned right. so i wanted to know kind of what progress there's been with that um as far as you know sure. across the city no, well, uh, thank you again for uh, being a really um, significant partner uh, in feels like planning has significantly increased your bandwidth. So um, again, we, we uh, thank you for partnering with us. Um, with regard to marketing um, opportunity sites within your ward, uh, we need a willing uh, property owner uh, often um, that is coming from the alderman bringing those 
uh, property owners to the table. Uh, and I can think of examples in, in Maldonado's ward where North the Pioneer Bank is in Invest Southwest. Uh, he was the one who brought those property owners to the table that allowed us uh, to market that site. So if you have those relationships and we have a willing uh, property owner, uh, then we can work, uh, work together. Uh, so that, that's the process. Um, we follow the lead of the alderman who brings those, um, those partners to the table because of the relationships they've had. Awesome. If you could, through the chair, kind of provide more insight into the Maldonados or another one in the city. I think for me, it's helpful just to have those examples to mm -hmm. kind of be able to show potential folks who might want to take advantage of like, hey, here's how it worked out. Here's sure. what you stand to benefit. Um, that would be uh, greatly uh, appreciated. Sure. Uh, something else that, that we've had conversations with the team in our kind of regular meetings is trying to create like or promote live workspaces. Right, so on Lincoln Avenue, where we're looking to develop an arts district, part of what we've been talking through, and I think it might go under maybe a special character overlay, um, it's really promoting for the ground floor retail mm -hmm. for people to build more live work spaces, meaning you know, um, apartments with storefronts. So that way artists, first time business owners have the opportunity to have a space to kind of exercise that entrepreneurial spirit without taking on the risk of having rent plus lease for another space. Um, so has there, have there been any successes or any conversations around developing that further? Yeah, well, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Patrick Murphy to help us out because I, I'm a big proponent as well um, of re-looking uh, at the zoning categories again as we kind of look for ways to activate the ground floor. And I think the overlay uh, concept uh, is a strong one. Um, Patrick? Sure. Thank, uh, thank you. Patrick Murphy, well, it's the zoning bureau. Hi, Alderman. Uh, so yes, we've talked about this a few times. Uh, there, there might be other tactics that we can use as far as looking at the zoning districts without having to go so far as create an overlay that serves that type of use, but we could look at ways to modify the districts that are along these certain streets so that it encourages that type of reuse and allows it by right so there's an easier process for people to get in to do those types of activities, gotcha. particularly the residential on the ground floor. Yeah, awesome. No, I, I appreciate it. Like I said, I, I like the way the whole team is very creative in trying to figure out solutions. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'll offer something of like, yeah, I, I think plan A might actually be better. So I, I love being able to hear that um, and really appreciate the partnership. Uh, the last question I have, um, so the department budget includes $73 million allocation for both 2021 and 2022 from ARP funds for the rescue plan fiscal recovery. Um, can you please either hear or, or preferably through the chair, uh, provide some specifics of what the 73 million will be spent on and how the retro retroactive funding is being applied? Because I think that's something mm -hmm. that's a question I've been asking a lot of the departments just to get more specificity on how those funds are gonna be spent. Um, uh, that's a good one. Would you like to, to summarize the 73 million now? Yes. Uh, um, I will try or, my or best to do it briefly, chair. but I, I think through the chair, you'll, you'll get more sure. um, information. So just for the ARP, because it is kind of combined with ARP and, and bond. Um, so when we talk about, I know we've talked a lot about vacant lots. So five million is in ARP, 82 million is, is in bond. Um, uh, community climate investments, there's $20 million of investments for that. So that's like retrofitting kind of these um, in black and brown low income neighborhoods, they're, they're not climate resilient, right? And we, and we actually see people die on a yearly basis because they can't accommodate uh, the heat or the, or the cold. Um, so there's $20 million worth of investments for that. For uh, various community development strategies, uh, there is a total of $30 million. Um, so that's everything from the vacant lot strategy to the vacant uh, commercial corridor strategy to community wealth building. So, so that's there. Um, and then we have small business and workforce support uh, to the tune of about 43 million. Got it, yeah, thank you. And if you, if you could do the chair even more yep. specific, greatly appreciated. Um, Happy I think, to do that. Sure, thank you. I think the, the last question I have, um, and this is more kind of a C dot slash partnership with DPD is really, I, okay, so I just learned how to ride a bike a month ago. I will admit that to everyone. Congratulations. Did you actually clap? Great, thanks for that. Uh, so, so that has kind of converted me into a zealot for this stuff as far as bike lane and infrastructure. And what I'm seeing is every 
ward kind of tries to do it on their own, but you really need a citywide network and yeah. plan for what this could look like. So um, has that been, obviously I think it's more CDOT than DPD, sure. but because it's such a large endeavor, um, has that been ever discussed or kind of talked through? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, our Commissioner Biagi uh, has a pretty aggressive expansion of the uh, bicycle network and where it overlaps with the streetscape reinvestments that um, DPD is co-leading with them, we're looking at the integration of bike lanes, the appropriate ones for those corridors uh, throughout the city. But uh, we, are, um, we are a very active partner with CDOT in, in, in uh, making sure that people have that mobility choice, that you uh, continue to be on your bike for many, many decades to come. Great. No, I, I appreciate that because I think it's something the whole city needs to wear because it, when it's one alderman, it's like a completely right. different challenge. But again, I thank you all for all the work that you do and really for the creative spirit you all have brought uh, to the work that you do. Uh, and thank you so much for it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vasquez. Alderman Coleman. Men, Commissioner and the team, it's always a pleasure. I want to get right into it. Uh, Invest Southwest for the 500,000 that was allocated for the corridor managers mm -hmm. uh, per corridor, if you will. I know in Inglewood, we do not have a corridor manager and we're going on year three. Where is that money, the 400,000, I guess, List mm -hmm. gets their 20% off top, so 100,000 for List. Where's the un other 400,000 sure. uh, being allocated to? Well, uh, you do you know that we um, entered into agreement uh, for corridor managers for all of the corridors with the exception of Inglewood where we weren't able to come to an agreement. We set those funds aside so that they are available to Inglewood and I look forward uh, now to a, a year out since we gave those contracts to sit down with you and see where we are and to see if uh, Inglewood is ready uh, to make that assignment. But those funds uh, uh, carried over and so they are still available uh, to Inglewood to have a corridor manager. Okay, well for the two years, will we, you know, th they'll just still be 200,000 left where we're we gonna put those I, dollars at. Is that, is that correct that two years of allocation that would still it's, be it's there. It's actually been about a year, a little over that's, a year. That's what I thought. And those dollars don't get spent. Uh, we the the way the agreement is set is we can use up to five hundred thousand dollars. So if we don't spend it, mm -hmm. the money is still there. And where is there? I would have to um, figure out exactly where through the chair. I don't know where the city keeps mm -hmm. <laughs> those resources, but we can get that to you through the chair. Okay, great. And they have not been, they have not been, uh, we very specifically uh, knew that we would get to a place where um, the vision for Inglewood would be clear and that all of the parties could come back together uh, and make that crucial, crucial assignment. So look forward to following up and seeing if this is a year where we can um, have an agreement on that. We'll see. <laughs> I trust we will. And, and if we have a couple of hundred thousand, you know, we can always use that for a green alley or <laughs> some garbage carts, <laughs> Jim. Uh, who's the deputy commissioner for uh, communications and public affairs? Um, Pete Strasabasco. Pete, okay. Yes. What exactly is his, you know, his role with, with you all? Uh, he oversees all of our communications, um, um, all of the Engagement is uh, um, directed through, um, he has assistant commissioner uh, who has been instrumental in helping us uh, increase our capacity both digitally to engage as well as uh, in person with the We Will. Uh, so small but uh, mighty team. Okay, is he here? He's not, uh, he's not here in the chamber today. Okay, I was just curious. I, I noticed that position, but I don't know who he is, and I would hope that, you know, some way our paths are crossed uh, with the alderman. Uh, Wilmore over there? Where's Wilmore? <laughs> Chip, I know we've been playing. 
I had to get you. I, I saw your government. I had to get you, um, but I know we've been <laughs> playing a phone tag with Chip, and I would like to talk to you offline about the 60th and Western TIFF. I want to thank you for following up because you uh, did not have to, and I appreciate that, that uh, uh, you've always been a great partner from day one at DPD. Uh, I just want to acknowledge Patrick Brutus, who's now our planner mm -hmm. in Inglewood, he's been a delight to work with. Uh, we agree to disagree, and, and when we agree, things are, are very well, and as long as he keeps listening and, and keep the concerns of the community, I, I think he's going to do well uh, in his role, and I'm really grateful that someone who looks like the community is now assigned in that role. Lisa and Jim, um, I know we've been talking about a project for bond temps. You know, Commissioner, when we have a developer that's interested in projects, um, this isn't a city where we can drag them alone. We need to show some type of yay or nay. Mm -hmm. Either we is or we ain't. Mm -hmm. And it's been two years of just kind of dragging this alone uh, because we had a planner and now we have a new planner and getting him caught up. Um, I don't have the time or the patience to, you know, are, are we or aren't we? This has been a vacant school for six years. We've got a developer. They're not seeking, you know, housing credits on this side, but more so uh, with Ida. And, you know, we've just kind of been getting dragged along. Are, are we talking about the Go Green on Racine? No, we're oh. talking about Bontemp School at the 58th and Elizabeth. Okay one of the vacant uh, school buildings. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see some, some movement mm -hmm. and let's, let's speed up our inertia mm -hmm. uh, with that. No, I look forward to following up on that and just getting uh, a sense of the situation and what the holdup would be. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Lopez. Hello, sir. I guess it's good evening. Good, e good evening, yes, uh, Commissioner. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, members of the committee. Um, I was listening upstairs, so I'm not going to bore you with things that have already been stated. Um, but actually, something caught my attention that I wanted to just uh, discuss. And it was something that Kathy Dickett mentioned, that it was the aspirational goals for hiring. And it. It's my understanding that your department is 41% vacant with the positions. No, that's not correct. The, the, the vacancies in your department, it's no. not 41? No, 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 absolutely not. We have uh, The book that I have says what, 26 vacancies, of which 17 are in the process of being filled at various stops, but it's... Okay, we'll have to double check that because I... I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's 20. 20. It is? Okay. Um, uh, just, sorry. Um, oh. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Nina Edenwood, Assistant Commissioner. So, yes, there's 26 vacancies, including the new, the, uh, the nine new positions that we're asking for. So, there were 17 prior to this budget cycle. Okay. Um, during our most recent uh, quarterly budget hearing, uh, at, for the second quarter, you were at 41.3% of your allotted budgetary spend. Do you assume that you're going to be at 100% by the end of this year? Are there, say, are, will there be, will you be coming under, will you be going over? Where do we find ourselves in terms of the, the 2021's allocation? Um, Matt? You Matt Schmitz, Deputy uh, Finance. Um, we don't have those numbers right in front of us, but we can get those to you through the chair. Well, we're going we're gonna to get them anyway. I was just wondering if you're anticipating being under since you were nine points under by the second quarter. I was just wondering if that trend, if you anticipate that trend continuing or if we're going to be making it up somehow. Uh, I think that trend will probably continue likely due to the slowdown of work as it relates to COVID. Okay. That is really all of my questions. I, I will say, uh, Commissioner, that 
Uh, we've seen a remarkable turnaround in communication and partnership with your department since the last time I was yelling and screaming from that seat over there. Um, so I really don't have too many complaints other than I want to echo what my colleague said, which is that I think we need to come to an agreement on the Englewood Corridor Manager being the only one left without one. Mm -hmm. um, I think when aldermen and department don't see eye to eye, we have to work it out. We can't just put it off to the side. Um, I, I think as well, one of the things that I would like us to see your department do is I know that we've been working with like uh, Chip and Mary O'Connor and a few others trying to bring some of these outdoor venues and spaces uh, into our communities, but it seems as though the first roadblock we get, it becomes a standstill. Inertia sets in. And I'd like us to, st to keep building and going mm -hmm because we do all of the legwork to get a, the neighborhoods excited mm -hmm. only to come to a complete and dead stop once whatever happens, happens. And I think that's really a lost opportunity for many of us. Um, with regards to Invest Southwest, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I didn't hear this, uh, so forgive me if it was said, but I didn't hear it. Um, in many of our corridors, there are, we're going to see their taxes reassessed. Was this issue brought up at all, Chairman? Nope. Okay. No. So what concerns me, and my question to you is, when you have entrepreneurs who are planning business models based on a very different property tax assessment, if they are to get hit two, three, four hundred percent because of what Fritz Kagi is doing, what support are they able to act, activate from the city side to ensure that our investment carries through so that they are not hit by the tsunami of property tax increases that we were not expecting or budgeting for in their proposed budget models? Hmm. Now, that's a very uh, good point, and I, I like the, the fact that you are anticipating uh, the success of this strategy, which will have an impact on uh, property values, uh, we we can study the the mechanisms we have to um, to work with property owners uh, so that they can manage to change. Uh, it's you know it's good to anticipate it. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but um, I'm I'm very interested in making sure uh, that we don't see the adverse impacts of greater success and greater economic development on those corridors and work with our, our zoning um, and economic development and uh, with uh, um, Cook County as well uh, to explore ideas. Okay. As long as it's a, we're putting it on the radar, because I know we've tried to be more adept and flexible with a lot of our programs, uh, thankfully most notably like the SSA programs, we were able to address some of the COVID-related issues. Um, but I think that's going to be the next silent wave that's heading our direction and mm. if we're not prepared for it right. whatever successes that you've been getting out of invest southwest are going to be wiped off the map in in one tax season yeah. so. well i appreciate the concern and i will also just thank you again for your partnership in your office that has uh helped us in staying in uh, pretty consistent communication and it it's paying off uh, i think we're seeing more ac more economic activity uh, in your ward. Uh, so thank you for the partnership. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. Well, Commissioner, you've come to the end of your um, budget hearing. And uh, I, I've been sitting here holding my tongue and my heart. Um, and what I'm going to say what's on my heart, which is, you know, I'm a big fan of the department. It's the department that I cut my teeth on as a young pup. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I have great affinity for the Department of Planning and Development. I think everybody that's sitting in that box, all the people that I've worked with in the Zoning Division, Historic Planning Division, um, Finance Division, are all great people and great professionals. You have priorities that you want to achieve with the department as aldermen, we have priorities that we want to achieve in our communities. We've been tilling in this, 
in this trench for a long time. Mm -hmm. You've been doing what you're doing for a long time. You've been where we are. So it's incumbent upon us to work together. You can't achieve your goals without us. That's right. And we can't achieve our goals without you. And we have to be more collaborative. And that's the only message that mm -hmm. I am leaving here today with you. Mm -hmm. Your salary is going up by $9,000. Your department's budget is going up by tens of millions of dollars. We got to work together. And that's the only way we're going to move this city forward. Have a nice evening. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate your, uh, your words of wisdom, and uh, I, I take them to heart. Uh, and you will see an increased cooperation and collaboration from our department as we uh, continue to, to improve. Thank you. Um, excuse me, five, we'll take a five minute recess for our last department, which is the Inspector General's office. Oh, you got one more department. Oh, thank you. This is. Uh